welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Got Racer 2004. This is episode 180, I think. 180 episodes of this game. <laughs> like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> oh, I'm joking. I mean, that, that's over a couple of years. Now, if I did this all in one year, then maybe, but that, that'd be a little bit concerning. But that's over, like, four years. No, four, yeah, almost five years, actually, on this channel. So, uh, I'm excited for breeding. I already know what I want to do. Diamond Plan is basically going to sire four uh, foals himself. Because I do plan on retiring him. Um, that's what I decided I'm going to do. Now, I could keep him going. But I already saw that if I retire him now, he'll be S and double S for that eval and classification. So um, the sooner the better, man, honestly. Like, the sooner the better. I know I could continue to race Diamond Plan much longer. And I said I was possibly going to, but considering his eval and classification already, um, his cost will be 23000 So he'll be the best sire I've ever obviously had in the pasture in this game for future horses. So I... I would like to get that going sooner than later, honestly. Everybody else, I'm still going to keep on their their plans. Like, I'm not going to retire any of the other horses. But I, I do recall, at least in the last episode, mentioning something about Diamond Plan possibly being the first one to retire. Above everybody else. I think Diamond Plan and them may be Silver Bullet. But all the other all the other uh, Colts, they're, they're still too young to retire. And they haven't even hit their peak. So... Um, Diamond Plan was always going to be the first, I think, out of the current group to be retired. And I think this is a good year. You know, Vivid Legend sired three foals last year. Um, so I think Diamond Plan getting a crop. And there's no guarantee they're all going to work, obviously. So the plan is for him to sire, like I said, at least four. I mean, four total. But if he only is able to get to three, um, you know, it... Not not a big deal. But again, I want to get foals from him because looking at his stats now, we can look forward to horses with really good speed, response, uh, and braking. All that will be, well, from Diamond Plan, all those stats are double S. Now, the temper and toughness will be D. Like, that's not great, but um, hopefully... The temper isn't too bad with the uh, when we breed him with the brood mares. Toughness being D, like I don't really pay attention to toughness. I know obviously it's important to have, but I'd much rather have the other stats. I feel like you can get by on, on toughness if you have a horse with good stats in the other categories. So um, heart will be C for Diamond Plan B uh, for that. Um, heart and power will be B and C. I meant to say so. Now, a general reason, like, this guy is falling back, and I probably had a terribly timed spurt, but I also think I gassed him. Yeah, I gassed him quite a bit. Well, that's a race I wish I could have back, but, um, uh, obviously I was distracted. I'm looking at my spreadsheet, uh, worrying about breeding. That was a grade two, and we were supposed to finish third. Like, we lost that race because of me. That's not the horse's fault. Like I said, I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't really like where we had him in the beginning of the race either, but I didn't stick to my plan. But the point is, um, I, I want to get a couple of foals out of Diamond Plan because I want to see how they turn out, statistically speaking. His stamina is A, so it's not bad. But we only have two sires with S stamina. Desert Derby and Vivid Legend. So I keep forgetting Desert Derby has really good stam. Good thing I haven't actually moved him out of, out of the pasture because his stats aren't bad. Like, he's pretty much... S, he's a S and B statted horse. He has one A and one C and then one D. But his stats are actually pretty solid. So despite not doing anything on track, Desert Derby is actually a, a good sire um, on paper for me as far as his stats are concerned. We'll get him on another uh, grade two for general reason. Bounce back. Um, so I, I am going to keep him around and, and do some more breeding with him. But yeah, it's only Desert Derby and Vivid Legend with the uh, the S-rated stamina. Diamond Plan only has A, but again, he has four ca other categories in the double S. So I figure, you know, to get more of our horses with double S's in them might still be the better plan in the short term here. Um, 
but it, you know, I, I want stamina. And the best, I mean, the highest our broodmare stamina goes is A, which is still not bad. But chasing hearts, um, fiery no, chasing hearts, Irish fleet, and awesome autumn. They all have the A rank stamps. So obviously, you know. They're going to be the three broodmares that will provide us the stamina in our horses um, going forward. So I just have to be mindful of that. Um, that's a good thing, though, obviously, because now, we, like I said, we finally have the horses for that. To start building those super stamina horses. Again, until a filly in the market, like Slide Chief or something, comes in comes around whatever but yeah I don't think we're too far off from from getting that brood marrow with double s stamina I, I think it's just a matter of time so like I said chasing hearts Irish fleet and awesome autumn I'm just gonna have to focus on them focus on breeding them with the best sires uh, stamina so I'll have to double check what I wanted to do this year for breeding and make sure that that kind of lines up. That way uh, we'll already have more horses that we can use for stamina going forward uh, once they retire. If their stamina is where I want it to be, you know. I mean, we technically have to use S and A and just continue to like kind of breed that up, I, you know, so to speak. It would be lovely to find a uh, find horses that already had double S like in the market because I think that would probably be the foundation. Because I feel like it's always possible that sometimes depending on how your breeding goes, like a foal could pick up stats from somebody else. I, I, t I typically think personally, excuse me, that they pick up the stats from like the most recent parents, their actual mother and father, and then I think the abilities may come into play obviously from other horses you know in the family uh, down the generations but I think the stats are always usually more reflective of the mother and the father initially so it's a good run here from fiery magic uh, fire magic excuse me we're still battling with a nine what is our what other ability do we have now we lost a lot of stamina coming uphill so that tells me his toughness I don't think he has a tough a good toughness rating because we were staying with him, and then uh, as soon as we came up that incline, he instantly tired. So we finished where we, where we were supposed to, third for him, so not terrible, but yeah, see on the spurt. I don't know what they wanted me to do with that. Start sooner or later. I'm so distracted just thinking about breeding, because this is an important year. So, like I said, I, I want to use Diamond Plan for at least four, but the same time if I'm really trying to focus on stamina then I need to have Desert Derby and Vivid Legends sire more foals this year with which in all honesty I think Vivid Legends got enough like let's go back to the pasture now like I might need to focus more on Desert Derby and Diamond Plan I mean I do want to get horses with Diamond Plan stats except for the temper but everything else would be fine I want to get those going so I may have to split because foals I don't think any of the current crop, like the current two-year-olds, actually we'll have to check them out to see who has their horses that are hitting the track this year. See, um, okay, so yeah, Vivid Legend, he's got one foal here, that's a colt, um, and then, let's see, Vivid Legend's got another one, another colt, three, four. Yeah, Vivid Legend already has four foals, so I think we can definitely give more attention to Desert Derby this year. Yeah, he's got plenty. Cowboy's got a couple. Yeah, so we can focus on Desert Derby and Diamond Plan this year, honestly, because Vivid Legend has enough. He has the main ones I wanted to do anyway, so like if I only get one full out of him this year, like it, it's fine. All right, so yeah, I meant to go back to stable. So who has our horses? Nazawa has Tigress of Stone. Okay, that's fantastic because I, if she's gonna be as good as I think she is, this will definitely help us improve our relationship with him because I, I had some really good horses through Tazawa. 
So no idea where her stat's going to be. This is from Flying Cowboy and Pink Gemstone. Really excited for this girl. Um, should be very, very easy to work with. So I, I feel like she's going to be a blast. Like I said, I think she should be better than Chasing Hearts. Hopefully. Um, so Nizawa's got Tigris of Stone. Bronk has none of our horses. Pink has none of them. And Cook has Toxic. Of course Cook would have... <laughs> of course Cook would have Toxic Blonde. Does it get any more cliche and, and predictable than that? Cook of all people has Toxic Blonde. And it wouldn't surprise me if Pink had her either. Either one of them wouldn't have surprised me. But technically speaking, it would have made more sense to for Pink to have gotten this horse. Because Pink is never satisfied with me. So that's toxic behavior. Like, I, I'm dominating with her horses and she's still indifferent with me. Like, she really, like, it's amazing. You know, the first time our relationship changed, she was like, I just don't like you anymore. Like, she stopped liking me. And uh, she has not returned... To anything above being indifferent. I guess she feels like I curved her. And that's not the case. Now, Toxic Blonde again is from Blue's uh, Breeze and Lee's Gold. So she should be very fast for sure. In fact, looking at them on the sheets right now. Let's see. Where's the speed is double S. And then Lee's Gold is A. So yeah, should definitely be very fast. Which I think I said previously. Stamina C for, or excuse me, stamina is uh, B for Lee's gold, and then it's a B for Blue's breeze. So her stamina should be, it should be okay. Like I, we shouldn't have to worry too much about that in races. Like I don't expect her to be any long endurance, long endurance horse. So she's definitely gonna be a sprinter and a miler for sure. Um, she is beautiful. She is beautiful. Her temper, that's what I'm really curious about. So D temper for Lee's gold, D temper for Blue's Breeze, which I remember us talking about when we were, when we were looking at her as a foal, but she was much smaller. We knew the temper was going to be bad. Yeah, she's going to be something else. Let's see, what are her, her feel rating? S for Blue's Breeze, B for, uh, no. Okay, so S for Blue's Breeze, D for Lee's gold. So our feel is going to be... It's going to be average or a little bit above that. So we shouldn't have to worry about, you know, her being upset about the pace too often. I mean, too much. I, I hope not, at least. Like, I think it'll be easier to get her in a good feel range. And as long as that's the case, hopefully her temper should be mild. But if she had a bad feel rating on top of a bad temper, that's when the horse just becomes uncontrollable and just very hard to ride. But I think the feel will help us get her in rhythm better which should hopefully keep her temper down because if she's a, if she feels good which is the main thing she feels good she shouldn't have much of a temper or much of an issue to give us a temper so okay she's got the high socks so yeah toxic blonde i'm really excited though i am excited to, to run with her so i think she's gonna be very fast and um her power let's see s power for lee's gold and B power for Blue's Breeze. So yeah, she she's a horse we can definitely take to Europe or just take internationally. Um, as soon as she's, you know, right, ready to rock and roll. I mean, growth type wise, Blue's Breeze, normal, Lee's Gold fast. So she, actually, she's going to be pretty strong right off the bat. Definitely. She's going to be pretty strong right off the bat, which I'm okay with. Especially when it comes to like the gals, because the sooner... For some of these gals, at least, the sooner we can get them raced and retired, especially if they have good stats, the sooner we can get them into the pasture for breeding. So, um, yeah, Toxic Blanche, she should be really explosive, really good young girl here. So, yeah, looking forward to um, seeing what she's going to be able to do for us. Yeah, wow, Cook gets all of my fillies. This is... She always has, though, since I've started this game, which is why I've lost so many, like, because me and Cook's relationship has not been great. It's like yin, yin, and, yin and yang with us. If I lose races, then that affects the relationship. But sometimes it's like, you know, her horses would ju were just not the greatest horses, the former gals. And then when I didn't do well on them, I lost them. You know what I mean? Like, it was sometimes it wasn't out of my control. Or it wasn't in my control, I should say, but it was out of my control. 
So yeah, Moontrapper still got a long way to go for my G2 test with her. I got to figure out what that does. So who has... Oh, Cattail. Um, Riv uh, Rivera has Cat Cattail. Another filly here. All the all the all the girls, man. All the girls. Um, Western Tiger and Suave Buster. This is gonna be Flying Cowboy's brother. I mean, this is her her sister, his sister, her brother. Uh, you guys know what time it is. It, it's late. That I'm recording this, so yeah. Eric is just mumble jumble, not making sense. I mean, she's gonna be Flying Cowboy, possibly stronger, maybe weaker, but I, I think stats wise, from what I remember, she was pretty solid. So. She's going to be good um, with a normal growth type. So, last one. Um, yeah, I thought it was four horses coming to the track this year. So, no, Zawa's got Tigris of Stone. Oh, Sheba, duh. So, Sheba has the last yearling. Uh, it's a two-year-old Colt, silent speaker from Desert Derby out of Irish Fleet. This horse should actually be solid because I totally forgot about Desert Derby stats. I just keep remembering that D classification or, or that D eval or eval or classification, whichever it is, it's a D rank. And I keep just remembering that and I'm totally ignoring the horse's stats, which obviously helps despite his lack of performance on track because I didn't race him enough a lot. And that was kind of the plan anyway. So looking at Desert Derby and Irish Fleet as we speak, Desert Derby has t three stats with S's, four stats with B, and then he's got one C, one D, and one A. And the D in temper is whatever. The C in power, I'm not worried about that. And the A in feel obviously is is solid. Um, his stamina again S. So Desert Derby is a sire with good stamina for sure. Speed is going to be B. Staying is B. Heart is S. Very gutsy horse and S response. So you look at those stats of Desert Derby, and we come over to Irish Fleet, who has double S power, which works out. That means her power rating hopefully should balance out Desert Derby's power rating for this uh, yearling. And when we look at Irish Fleet's speed, she has A. Again, Desert Derby has B. So this horse, it's not going to be the fastest out of our bunch, but should be fast enough to compete at whatever uh, distance it runs at. Um, stamina, again, S and A for both of the parents. That's what I really want. So this guy should have very good stamina for us. Breaking and feel um, are going to be solid for us as well in the A category. Um, what else? He said power will be balanced out. Uh, temper is not going to be great. But the feel rating is going to be good. Both parents have A. So, I, like I said, I feel like with my horses, as long as they have a good feel rating, the temper is, you know, it's, it's mitigated to an extent. You know, like Gemstone technically had a temper. I think King B, Fiery Dancer. But, like, they never became an issue because I think they all had pretty decent to good feel ratings. It was easier to get them dialed in. And then when they were comfortable, like, they didn't really have a reason to show us their temper. So... Um, yeah, this guy should actually be pretty solid. Now, response balances out because Desert Derby has S and Irish Fleet has D. So it's not going to be the greatest response, but we don't have to worry about the horse being too slow to get going like Irish Fleet was sometimes. So, yeah, I think statistically this should be a pretty solid horse. The only ratings that are going to really suffer is temper, I think. But everything else should either be improved or... Um, I mean, improved to a substantial amount, or it'll be balanced out. Um, you know, like it won't just be bad, which is my main thing for one. I don't want horses with bad stats anymore. But temper, like, I can deal with it if the if the feel is good. So I feel like I can sacrifice that to focus on the other stats that I want to with my horses. And it's been working for me. Like I said, I mean, we've had a couple of moments with stargazing, but. I realize I just have to run him differently than what the game is telling me. The game is telling me to run him in a way that's actually not beneficial for him. So we have to improvise. And I'm going to keep reminding people of that. You know, if you're struggling with the horse, for anybody that may, that maybe is, especially if you play on whatever difficulty you play on, um, you know, just just be mindful of improvising with your horses in a race because sometimes depending on that horse and the game 
it the game is not always accurate honestly like just play around with some horses you you can figure out that you can run horses outside of their preferred position leg type sometimes and you can still have a lot of success and win with that horse um and especially use that if you can't get in rhythm with a certain horse try that like if you are if you're already struggling you don't have anything else to lose in my opinion at that point um but i mean it, it, it works for me as you guys can see we've been able to still succeed with stargazing even though i'm running him completely out of his position because if he wants to just go fast which he does all the time i'm like okay i'm just gonna let him go and if it sends him to the front instead of keeping him at the back like where he's supposed to be it is what it is he's got the stamina and all the other good stats to handle the races and we can still win you know so that's just some advice from host racing gamer to you golden boy is up in this g2 he is the favorite and this guy is so fast, man. His speed is still not showing, but he is so fast already. Honest Pegasus and Lee's Gold. So like I said, Lee's Gold, she, she's clearly proven to be a good uh, a good broodmare for us. She's got to be uh, B level stamina. I don't know what his is going to be yet. 9 to 12, though. I think that puts him above average, but he is beautiful. Um, he is beautiful. And Kayla, if I haven't already reminded you, which I'm hoping I did, but if I haven't, um, a render of this guy would be amazing because I I think he's beautiful. He is he is literally a walking stud and look at those stats already all in in the yellow of course fast growth type so he's gonna be at his best very quickly and then that's it. But that works out for us again. Like you guys know I want horses with longer growth types but. To get horses like these with the stats that I want to improve with fast growth types, I'm not mad at it right now. You can always breed into growth types with different horses, but I want the stats first. The stats is, are going to make it easier for us to achieve the success and help our horses become stronger. And then when they breed, hopefully, um, you know, allow the, the foal to inherit a lot of those stronger stats. It's all a method to my madness, man. Now I can actually say that definitively. If I've said it in the past before, that, you know, that was not to be taken literally. But now with the changed approach to breeding, I, I definitely f um, feel that I have figured it out. Like, the thing, I could have been had my, like, stamina-based horses if I would have focused on that earlier. I just decided to really take it seriously a little bit late. All right, now we got to get last corner leader here with this dude, which should not be a problem. Look at his stamina. I wonder what his stamina is, honestly. He has got a lot, man. He has got a lot of stam. Look at this. I mean, we're the favorite, but he's just he's blowing these fields away, man. Need to get him in a grade one. More, I should say. Yeah, this guy is fast, man. Fast, fast, fast. <laughs> it's a good win for him, as always. Golden boy. I mean, he's by eight lengths absolutely destroys it yeah I wonder what his stamina is going to be moon trapper's up expected to finish fourth I know I put her in this race because, because the game just kept bringing them up I'm just like I don't want to run her this long and the game just keeps bringing it up and it's like okay you know what whatever like I think she's def finally at the point where like winning grade threes is going to be her best option I think she's uh, she's fallen off quite a bit, and now G2s are just a little bit too tough for her to win. So, like I said, we'll move her down to grade 3s. And then after that, maybe opens. But I feel like she'll always have a handicap in opens. But maybe not. I mean, maybe the game will be nice and actually, like, realize, okay, she's not as strong as she used to be. So we don't need to put this handicap on her. 
Like, I understand the handicaps when your horses are, like, at their peak. But once they're past their peak, like, there still shouldn't be a handicap to me. Like, that should be adjusted on the fly. So, yeah, I'm hoping that maybe it does adjust that. And then, like I said, we can run her in opens, too. I know it's too slow, but, like, we can't do anything about it, Moon. She's like, why are we going so slow? <laughs> it's like, well, apparently nobody wants to uh, set the... Uh, well, nobody's a front runner. That's the main problem. <laughs> no, there's a horse that could be running as at the front, and he's like... They're, they're two off of last place. They're supposed to be up here setting the pace. Kramer is on that horse. Kramer, you're messing me, to up, messing me up today, bro. You're supposed to be up here. That's why this pace is so slow. An actual front runner would, could help s potentially set a faster pace. Because technically I'm leading. And this is not where Moon's supposed to be. I mean, she can run here, but we're, we're not supposed to be leading the race. But... Kramer doesn't want to bring his horse up to the front like an absolute moron. So that's cool. Like, the, I'm in my position. This is where I'm supposed to be. Kramer is supposed to be here or leading the race. And he's not even close. That's the problem. And I swear to you, watch. He's going to win this race somehow. It's almost like he's taking my advice because maybe that horse runs better in that position. But I don't believe it. I think it's just the AI just being stupid as always. Okay, Moon, let's go. Let's go. Okay, really good run for Moon here. Kramer's falling backwards. Did she just get a spurt? Oh, come on, Moon. You've been doing so well here today. Oh, nice. Moon. Come back at us. Nothing we could do about that. She ran her heart out, man. She finished second. That was actually a really strong race there for Moon Trapper. She showed us a lot of heart in that race. I really thought we actually could win it. So, I mean, ultimate rock for whatever reason. I swear it seemed like that horse got an ability because we were pulling away and we were maintaining. And then all of a sudden, it's like that horse got a stretch burst ability and went past us. And yeah, Kramer, that, Kramer ruined his race so bad he finished in last place. Yeah, as I thought. Like, that race was all over the place because Kramer, on his horse, decided he didn't want to be at the front. And he fell in last. Like, yeah. Formal Opera, a.k.a. Secretary, is up. We're not the favorite. Six furlongs. I think this runs a little bit outside of his distance. Like, he's not, like, this type of sprinter, I guess, in this game. Who's the favorite? First Phoenix post position next to us. Okay. Well, Whatever. Um, how many G1s do I have with them? Oh, am I even keeping track? Am I? Well, I can look. At least you can look in this game. Because I'm recording this after the most recent Galbraith for three episodes. So. In that game, like, I have to write everything down as far as the grade ones. Because you can't keep track of it until your horse retires. That's the only time it'll tell you how many they have. But you can't look at it normally if your horse is still racing. But in this game, as long as your horse is still racing, they can always tell you how many great ones they have, which is important. I do have to keep track of the distances, though. Which... Doesn't appear I've done for the last couple of episodes. It's a little bit annoying. Because sometimes I forget, like... In this game, when even when you're looking at your horse's race history, it only shows you the most recent 10. So if you've raced 20 times, you're only going to see 10 of them pop up in the game, which is annoying. It's just like, you're giving us the option to look at all of our races, but not all of them. You know? And it's like, it doesn't have a system to keep track of all of them to look at at the same time. So it, it basically forces us, the player, to do it. Now, I don't know what's happening back here. I need some space. Oh, wow. Just open the gap for me. I'm actually kind of surprised that happened. I usually get blocked in those situations. Ah, oh, come on, Formo. Wow. He's got so much stamina left, man. I was not prepared for that. Not prepared for that lane to open up. We're going to finish third? That's a podium, at least. Or fourth. 
Ah, third. Yeah, that's a podium. Okay. We had a lot of stamina. I probably could have gotten them going way sooner, and we would have held off. So that's on me. Be spurt. Yeah. Uh, that's on me. Keep forgetting how much stamina he has, honestly. Could have gotten him going way sooner, sent him to the front, and then, um, yeah, he could have maintained that lead. Because those horses weren't that fast. Like They just pulled off in front of us underneath the furlong to go. Keep forgetting. I'm going to enter these horses in races. So, Moon, we need you in one. Golden Boy, I swear they better not have run on you again. Okay, no. Yeah, we're, we're set for seven with Golden Boy. Honest Pegasus. He's no longer around. I replaced him, which I shouldn't have, but it, it is what it is. Flying Cowboy is stronger, so... Flying Cowboy and Lee's Gold, if they have a foal on the way, or it's already here that we've looked at. Um, so that foal could be just as good as Golden Boy has been, and better. Because apparently that combination with Lee's Gold works. And I think Honest Pegasus and Flying Cowboy had similar stats. Because I don't know if they were half-brothers or not, but... They have very similar stats, so I think those stats with the same broodmare will work for sure. They want him in the Azalea Cup, and finally, yes. Because does he have a great one yet? No, he doesn't, so... That's definitely what we need to do for him. A form of opera. Gotta get you in a race, my man. Another grade one. Louisville Derby. Yeah, the Kentucky Derby. Let's do it. Let's see if we can make him a triple crown winner this year. How exciting would that would be? And then Butterfly Effect. What am I waiting for with you? I didn't even run her last time. Some fool Harris ran her. But you know what? He won. That's cool. <laughs> I still don't like people running with my horses. But if I do forget, at least I hope that they win. It's just like, that's still RNG. No guarantee. But she stays undefeated. At least in the recent races. Which is good. Now let's send her to the Cherry Cup. And make sure I keep that in mind. Try to get her her first grade or her second grade one. She has bears as well. That's the last ability. Well, her stamina 75, and as long as I don't over whip her if she is tired, like bears should not happen. Her stats are looking really good though, for me. Like she's already got five stats in the yellow. Western Tiger and Irish Fleet. I mean, she, yeah, she's gonna peak relatively quickly. Normal, basically. Feel toughness, both almost near 70. Yeah, butterfly effect. Could be an awesome brute mare for us, actually. No bad stats. This is all I want. No bad stats, man. I don't want any more horses with bad stats. Fire magic. Uh, I don't even know what to do with you, bro. What do you run? Still not telling me. 51 stam. Ugh. I mean, he's got three wins out of his six starts. He, he is doing better than I thought. Like I said, I don't know his distance because the game just doesn't want to tell me. As if, like, that's just a good thing. And it's like, no, it's annoying. Uh, I'm not going to put him in that grade one. I'm just going to run him in another open. It's like nothing. 51 stam. Like, I don't want to run him 10 furlongs. So I just... Def not smart. <laughs> so I think everybody's ready to go. Yeah, Stargazing and Moonbee. Both double S. That's fantastic, man. Silver Bullet. I thought I put you in this race. Did I not? I, I swear I had him in that race. Now, I did retire him early just to see what his classification to eval would be. He'd only be like A and C. So that was lower than I thought, which is a little bit disappointing. Um... So yeah, with Silver Bullet, I mean, I, I guess I, I don't know what to do with him. I don't know if I should retire him early based off of those stats or if I should just keep racing him. I'm, I'm indecisive about him. But I still feel like we can win at the lower levels if I continue to race him. But will that really help his eval and classification that much? I don't know. Maybe if we try to get him a Dirt Horse award every year, which is very possible. I don't know. We'll see. Moonbee's up in the Royal Cup. And the favorite. Yeah, Moon's been doing fantastic. Exceeded my expectations. It's not like I didn't think the horse was going to be good. I have to keep saying that. But 
he's just doing much better than I thought. Like, it's been pretty easy to win with him. A southpaw and in post. Gotta remember that. Well, mainly southpaw. In post is out of my control. Like, if I get it, I get it. So. And yeah, he doesn't have bad stats except for the temper and response and the feel, of course. But um, the speed, the staying, the power of the heart, all that stuff is good. His stam was in the 70s or... Maybe it's close to hitting 70, because he's still not hit his peak yet. That's the thing. He's pretty much there. But like I said, I just don't want any horses with bad stats anymore. And we'll continue to build stamina as we continue to build horses with no bad stats and some strong horses. That's the thing. We, we're getting stronger horses finally, and uh, we're able to do much more. Just taking me a while in this game because the first half, maybe the first three quarters of me playing this game on YouTube, I just wasn't focusing really on the right things I should have been focusing on for my plans. Like I knew what I wanted to do, but I was being pretty lazy about it and just kind of procrastinating on it. I was doing a lot of experimentation. Like I probably did way too much experimenting in the first half of this series. Like, I could have condensed my experimenting down quite a bit now that I think about it. But in the moment, I just went with it because I'm just like, whatever. So. So, Moon's looking good here, as he should be. Horses are there's just such a joy to ride, man, when they, when they do everything right. Moonbee's gone. Revolution, uh, of course. Are we going for the record? Uh, why not? Why not with Moon B? This guy is, wow. I never really know what to say because, like I said, he's just... I think he is much better than what we expected him to be, at least. <laughs> what the heck? That looks so goofy. With just one horse that far ahead and then everybody else is just at the back. That looks unbelievably goofy. Not that I'm complaining, it's just like that looks silly. It's like I have a hack on or something. I'm just like, no. It's just this guy is just really strong, man. Really strong and fast, honestly. Yeah, really, really fast. Because King Bee and Gemstone both are fast. I mean, remember how many times Gemstone was finishing, you know up there with the fastest sprinters for like several years she was able to do that even when she was on the decline she was still always able to finish against the international special graded horses and like gemstone stats i mean she's got two s's two a's two b's two d's and two c's like she's not the the, the strongest horse but she was always able to keep up with the strongest horses so she really is she's really contributed to the good pedigree i think clearly as you can see and then you stack that was a perfect race double s all the way around you stack pink gemstone's strength and consistency with the stats of king b and he was legitimately very strong you know you get moon b who is uh yeah doing so much better than i expected because again like gemstone doesn't have like great stats it's just there's you know they're above average but nothing higher than that so that just goes to show you what can happen a diamond plans up and having us favorite is the last derby three horse I feel like diamond plans just ready to this <laughs> go ahead and call it quits for racing but you're still strong my guy you are still strong But I will be retiring you soon because, uh, well, actually, after this, I'm going to retire him. Because, like I said, I, I want to get breeding with you done soon. So, actually, we are doing you a favor, as you deserve, because you're an amazing horse. I know I could achieve so much more. I know I can. I know I can. But 
I feel like Diamond Plan can help us get horses that can do what he does quicker. Currently. Because our strongest sire is Vivid Legend. Now, can Vivid Legend give us a Diamond Plan type of horse? I would think so, but I'm not sure. Like, I feel like he's, he might be stronger in, in 2003 than he is in this game. So, if that's the case, then yeah. Breeding with him in this game may not be as successful as it's been for us in in comparison to 2003, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, yeah, like... I think, um... I think it just it's better for us to get Diamond Plan retired now, to get breeding with him underway sooner, because his stats and his pedigree and his ebound classification alone are going to really help us in getting horses like him a lot sooner. Like I think it's it, it'll be a for sure thing with Diamond Plan. Vivid Legend, I'm not sure, because again, I think he's stronger in 2003. So I don't know if like the foals will come out as strong as they should in this game. But I think Diamond Plan will definitely be a sure thing. But he, it's 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 hard to to think about retiring him when he can still blow fields apart like this and win, way past his prime now. Golly, man! I mean, just. <laughs> Because the thing is, if I don't retire him now to do breeding basically in the next five minutes of this episode, then I'm going to have to just kind of still wait around with more horses that at best will be like Vivid Legend, which is not terrible. But again, I still feel like they kind of nerfed Vivid Legend to an extent in this game in comparison to 2003. So... Uh. so tough because he can still win like that like it's just incredible but again that's not like the limit of like where I want to get to and I would definitely like to do more winning and title chasing and domination with my own horses not with like the game's horses hopefully that doesn't come off as like a prideful thing but I, I like I personally just like having my creations actually be able to do the fighting, the racing, the winning, whatever the case is, compared to the end game stuff. I've, I've always liked that as a gamer. So I would like to achieve Diamond Plan's level of success and more, but not with a horse like him. I would, I would like to do that with my own horse. So like, I know I could get more, way more titles with him because like I can still win with him, but like I said, it's we're close anyways. It's a couple more years. I don't think it's really going to be that long. We're going to have a horse that's going to be Diamond Plans level very soon, I think. Stargazing is up in the climax. Very winnable. We should win. Is that, actually, do I need to worry about anybody else in this field, honestly? Enter any motion? Okay, I mean, that is a good horse. Desert Diver? Okay, I mean, that's... <laughs> Yeah, those are two horses. Floral Derby is good, but we've beaten him several times now. But Desert Diver and Inner Emotion, we do have to watch out for them, definitely. I mean, Desert Diver's five. Yeah, he's still not far off. Inner Emotion, five years old, so they're, they're still holding strong here. But Stargazing is the, is the new young kid on the block, man. But, like, he's, like, the really good new young kid on the block. You know, they're... The older dudes are just, you know, getting a little bit, a little bit anxious because, uh, you know, it, I don't know if it's like an instinctual thing. It's like the thought of some younger guy being able to do what you've been doing for a while or for a while or whatever, you know. It's just like I had to work so hard to get to this point or whatever. And then you have some young kid come in and they're just already that good at such an early age it's happening a lot in sports all over the world now athletes are just getting stronger and faster the younger they are stargazing is that guy beautiful love this dude he's been such a joy to work with even outside of you know the minor incidents with him when he's like this is too slow and then he decides he wants to just buck it to the front but like i said i'm just gonna let him run there now honestly 
Counterclockwise, not good. 9 to 12, normal growth type. Hmm. I mean, but seriously, like, where are... Where? Remember, I think the last episode or the, ep, ep, or the one before that, but I'm pretty sure the last one, I looked, you know, we looked at the horse's uh, pedigrees and their parents. None of them had counterclockwise not good. Like, my horses are just inheriting that ability from the game. Now, if it's, if you were to look up these horses' pedigrees in 2006 and it shows you, you know, the whole family tree, that's a different story then. You know, but I don't know if this game keeps that. I don't know if it actually records that as data. Like, we know we can look at a lot of horses' parents. Like, the good horses in this game. We can find their parents now in 2006, basically. And the grandparents and so on and so forth. But, um, like, I don't know if this game actually keeps, has data to properly address that. Which means, like, Sedate Ruler's parents in 2006. I don't know if the game, this game keeps that into consideration when it comes to like that horse's pedigree and breeding you know i don't know if it's actually a mechanic that they or a code that they wrote into this game i don't know if anybody can really know that for sure unless you have some insider knowledge so i'm saying that to say like unless this game has the parents involved as well in the horse's profile I'm just inheriting that ability just out of nowhere from no from no horses tied to to mine. <laughs> it's just like where are the odds of that? <laughs> but I mean, if it would happen to anybody, I think it would definitely be me. Like weird stuff happens to me like that all the time. Now, stargazing, he's fine with this pace here. He's actually okay with the pace today. He has not complained once. Which is a very good sign, obviously. Max Stam, like, he's really feeling comfortable right now. So, yeah, they're going to start moving a little bit. That's fine. It's like ants, man. Now they're gonna, really going to work this turn. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Got a spurt. Now don't get in the way. Now, did I start too late? Are we going to get a gapper? There it is. Ah, oh, come on, stargazing. Show him up, man. Ah, oh, I think I got started too soon. How'd I get started so late? I mean, he's closing in, but... Ah, oh, I botched that so bad. Ah. Oh. Fourth place. Those are races I want back so bad, man. I botched that awfully. Desert Diver sets the record... Oh, gosh, gosh, gosh. I want that race back so bad. So, so, so bad. <laughs> yeah. But, um, technically counterclockwise track. Right? Um, it's not the direction he wants to run. Because clockwise would be how I think... Uh, most tracks are obviously like in the UK, Australia for like thoroughbreds. Where else? Um, Japan, South Korea. It's basically what that track is. He doesn't like that. Or no, that's actually um, this track that we just ran on. That's basically a normalized direction for thoroughbred racing in America. But that that's the point. He doesn't like running on those tracks is what I'm trying to say. You know, he wants to run clockwise. He wants to run the way of like the European and like Asian thoroughbred tracks usually are. He's not a fan of it. So we were still the favorite, which probably was just on the horse's abilities and stats and our recent record, but technically speaking, it's not a good track for him. That on top of me getting started late, we struggled. He's really, really strong, you know, so he's always going to finish still, I think, in the top five, even if I blow a race with him and I don't blow his stamina um, down too too hard, but yeah, that was not a good race. Anyways, I thought we were supposed to have like six foals, three from Vivid Legend. Oh no, this is um, this is this year's breeding. Duh, Eric. Now, they already have the parents sorted out here, but yeah, I'm not doing that. Um, so I said we were gonna do. So I said chasing hearts in diamond plan but i also gotta like i said look at the stamina so chasing hearts is a diamond plan 
Uh, I have to retire him first of all. Yeah. Um, was I supposed to save? Or is this already planned for this year? It's not what I wanted to do. Lovely horse to, to debut. Okay, thanks. Can I not change the, the breeding? I thought you actually had more... I feel like I always forget in this game. Like, you don't have time to just go back and do it. <laughs> it just automatically does it for you. It's like, can I really not... Will it work or will it not work? Yeah, like, it, this has already been done. Ugh. Which would mean no diamond plan this year. And probably... Ugh. We've already done so many races. I, I don't want to restart, man. I really don't. Because I haven't saved at all in this episode. So that's... Uh, that's slightly annoying, man. Honestly. Because that's not what I wanted to do. At all. <laughs> like, I wanted different breedings, but... <sighs> like, I wanted Desert Derby again in there because he has good stamina. I mean, Fiery Dancer and Flying Cowboy, what is that even going to be like? Ugh. Okay, so Fiery Dancer, Breaking, okay, Stamina, C, B, Speed, A, S, okay, Response, A, A, okay, Power. I mean, it's not going to be a bad horse between Fiery Dancer and Flying Cowboy. Hopefully the Stamina is a little bit better, because Dancer was just a sprinter and miler, so. Still not ideal, though, like, I'm, ah. So, uh, anyways, Blues Breeze and Awesome Autumn. Um, looking at them, let's see, staying in speed or double S, S, S. Okay, so that horse is good. Should be really fast. Stamina A for Awesome, B for Blues Breeze. So that's not terrible. Stamina we won't have to worry about. Should be extremely fast. Um, let's see, Heart D. A, that'll balance out response. A, S, okay, breaking. Okay, so I mean, all honestly, they're going to be good horses. Like, I think this horse is going to be stronger. Autumn, 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 and Blues Breeze. I mean, I'm kind of looking forward to that. Just because I, I haven't really known what to do with Blues Breeze. Just because, like, his B stamina is kind of keeping me away from him. But this might actually be really strong here between these two. Dancer and Cowboy should. I think Cowboy has proven he's a good sire, so... And with Fiery Dancer and some of her really good stats, I mean, this should be pretty nice. And then Vivid Legend and Chasing Hearts, of course, that's going to be really big. And that was planned. But still, I just, um... I don't know, just wanted to do more, but I guess I'll just have to set them up for next year. It is what it is, man. We're still going to get strong horses, regardless. It's just, I wanted to actually focus on the specific breedings, but I'm just going to have to wait a year and... Who knows? Maybe that's just by design. Maybe the Gallup Racer gods, the Gallup Racer deities, are saying, no, keep Diamond Plan on track for another year because he can still achieve more for you and still retire with that same e-bound classification. And if that's the case, it's like, you know what? Okay, because, you know, like I said, technically it would make sense to continue to race him to get more titles with him anyways. And he's still so strong, and I'm still winning with him, like, first, <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at those last three wins, China Mile, World Mile Cup, and then the Heaven S. Those are three really, really big races, and look at his peak, you know, like, he's been on the decline for a while, and we're still able to win with him. Now, he's about to hit 10 grade ones, which is awesome. Now, titles-wise, he has five. He's got five titles. I just don't even know. I haven't even been really keeping track of, like, these G1s, honestly. But I figure, like, I just need to run whatever I can, and I'll probably eventually get a title in there. That's all I'm going to do with him. 
Maybe I need to start running on the dirt. In fact, we may have to ch try for that GWS dirt. He'd be my first horse I've gotten the, that those three with, which that would unlock the Dream Series, would it not? Or something like that, like winning every ch championship of the GWS and then retiring a horse that's done that. From my understanding, that would unlock the Dream Series, which I have not done in this game ever. So I uh, cannot wait to get to that point. So yeah, uh, we're keeping this dude. Second cup, let's run it. It's GWS turf. I mean, yeah, there's no point to put him in this race if I can just run him here. Anything else? Fleet Singapore. Well, trying for the dirt would be hard because like none of them are available here. Like, they don't allow him to run on the internationals. And they don't allow him to run. Yeah, so they're not even allowing him to run on the dirt at all. Okay, no. Okay, they will allow him to run on the dirt occasionally. Okay. Well, how about that? Anytime there's a dirt G1, we'll go ahead and win that. Because I think getting him a dirt title would be pretty sweet. <laughs> but until dirt races pop up, we'll stick him to just doing the biggest races we can. Yeah, you know what? Let's be realistic, Eric. Let's be realistic. You can do way more with Diamond Plan, and that can help. Stargazing. Totally dropped that one. Can I retire him already? Wow, he's already peaked. He just turned four. Yeah, well... Does he have a title yet? No. Spring Mile... He has all round. Oh, he does have a title. Yeah, he got one last year. All rounder. Okay. Four G1 wins. Ten wins. Or four G1 wins. Of his ten. And that's from 15 starts. And he's been on a roll as of late. He's won... He's won like six races in a row, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's absolutely on a roll right now. So... Um, yeah, let's run him in that spring mile because we don't have a mile. Yeah, how many G1s has he won at the mile distance? I haven't even... That's what I mean. I haven't even been keeping track. Um, actually, maybe we can just look at all his G1s. Okay, so young mile cup, so that's one. 15 prints, China. He's actually close. Well, yeah, we he already got the all-rounder. I just said that. Um, so he's got one at... 8 furlongs, 10 furlongs, and then um, 15. I mean, yeah, like, technically speaking, he's just going for, like, a mile title now. Right? Might as well. I think he's won two at a mile. I'm pretty sure. I think. Because this only shows three grade ones. But the Young Mile Cup... The Prince Cup and the China Cup. So, there's another one I can't remember. I'm guessing it's probably eight. But so, we should chase the mile title with him anyways. I mean, that would probably be best. Alright, I think we're good to go. Um, so, yeah. We are keeping Diamond Plan out for another year. And like I said, it's probably best. He's got five titles already. We can work on more. He's just, he's such a strong dude, man. My gosh. It's just like, even if he's on the decline, he's still, like, so powerful. So I like my horses, man. They can still race after they hit their peak. Like, I'm still having to worry about horses hitting their peak because some of them are just not that strong enough to still be that competitive. Like, at Diamond Plans level now, he's, like, technically almost two years past his peak. Like, my horses that I've been creating, they just haven't been that strong with that, you know, with that type of dominance to, to stay that long after they hit their peak. So, like, we need that. That would be great because then I can achieve more and I don't have to worry about a horse hitting their peak. I can be like, oh, well, the game says they're going to peak at f four, but realistically, they're still going to be strong and I can still race them until they're six or whatever. And, like, they can still do the same exact thing. Now, here's a grade two. Regal Soul is here. 
easy treasure. Like, can you guys just go away? Like, I don't want you here today. But Regal Soul is the second favorite, and Easy Treasure is the favorite. Like, why are you guys here? This is a big grade one, though. This always brings competitive fields. Long Live Bolero is a turf horse. We expected to finish 11th. He's, I mean, this guy's only four. He's not going to peak until another year and a half, so... We just have to continue to build build up with him because he's been running strong. Which he's been showing good signs. So once he's actually ready to hit his peak, I mean I think he is gonna be a strong turf horse. Still a bummer, you know, he's not a dirt horse, but hey, seeing Bolero on the turf, I mean that's something cool we can try to look forward to. I mean, because Great Bolero came from Scabbard, and Scabbard was not a dirt horse. We didn't, like, we, that's not how she ran, you know? So, and Great Bolero kind of got lucky getting, becoming a dirt horse from Bionic Club. Like, just saying, like, that clearly the father's pedigree contributed more to the dirt rating. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there was no guarantee, actually, the Great Bolero was always supposed to be a dirt horse, because, again, his mother wasn't. So, there was all all of a good chance that he could have been a turf horse if RNG decided that. Like, that's when the game just kind of gives you something, you know, special. And that's why the Great Bolero is special. He really could have been a turf horse. Probably should have been a turf horse, but instead his preference was dirt. So, you know, if he ran on turf, I mean, we wouldn't look at him any differently, I don't think. You're fine, you're fine, bro. We gotta go now. Last corner leader, though. He's fighting strong, he's fighting strong. He's doing his best as he can. We still need to finish 11th, but now he's dropping. Ah, oh, he's tired. Did I get him going too soon? Yep, I think I did. I thought he was gonna be okay with that, but... I blew that, so that's uh, my fault. Got him going way. I genuinely thought he was going to be able to like hold on to that, but over overestimated his ability on there a little bit. Like if that were obviously the other stronger horses we're running with, that that would have worked, but not with uh, Bolero. His stamina's not that great anyway, so that's my fault. My bad, buddy. I mean, 50 stam, like, you know, I, I still do have to be careful about that, which is a little bit of a bummer. But, um, yeah, two wins out of 11 starts. Yeah, he's still finding his rhythm, but, again, he's, look, look at his growth type. I mean, he's not even close to any his peak, so we're going to get there with him. I'm not worried. I'm really not. When are you going to be in the blue again? Not until July? My gosh. I mean, I guess that, that works. We'll, we'll drop him to a grade three. He still may not be ready for grade two yet, honestly. He still might not. I mean, he's that, the growth type is really long on this on these horses. And this and the Bolero family. Like, the growth type is very long. So, yeah, he still may not even be completely ready for grade twos. All right, Butterfly Effect is up today in the Cherry Cup. Let's go. Um, yeah, I want to race with my gal. And actually, I uh, need to get a new recording session started. So I will uh, take a quick break here, and then I will be right back. All right, we are back. And uh, Butterfly Effect, she is the favorite in today's Cherry Cup. Let's go look at our girl. Night Breeze there. That's a really, really uh, pretty horse, Black Force. And there's our girl Butterfly Effect, who is the favorite. And uh, yeah, she's pretty amazing. I mean, she's she's exactly what I want for the, for the time being, for sure. So I like that stamina a lot. Bears, like I said, I don't think is a problem. I mean, she should be this strong. She's from Western Tiger and Irish Fleet. Like she should. If she wasn't this strong, that would be concerning, right? Gosh. The horses are on the track. 
Yes, we know. We see the horses. And guess what? They're on the track. Gee, you don't say. All right, let's get this win, shall we? With our lady, Lady Butterfly. Almost a perfect start. Okay, now she's gotta be at the front, obviously. Now she's got really good abilities too, that work hand in hand, so it really makes easing, it makes winning easy with her. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it definitely helps that she actually has good stamina. That's what I want. Like, I want horses with stamina that averages in, you know, at 77 or something. High 70, 75 even, because that means we won't struggle with most races. I don't have her out of this 13, and I need to, but... I don't want to get, uh, burn her out too quick. Pull away, pull away, pull away. A little bit late on my spurt, but she's got plenty of stamina to do it, and she will. Yep, Butterfly Effect is the real deal, people. The real deal. Butterfly Effect runs away with them. <laughs> in the stormy conditions here in Toronto for the Cherry Cup, she gets it done. Yeah, man, she's the truth. <laughs> Love that gal. Gets it done. Five length winner. Not even close. Would like to watch that back, actually. It's a really good win there for Butterfly Effect. And proving her dominance continues. Don't even need a revolution with her. And she, uh... Yeah, she ran that race exactly as she needed to. Like I said, I think, you know, managing her stamina was very important, despite the fact that she has good stamina. I think we still needed to manage it just to be careful. But, um, yeah, she absolutely walks away with that win. And I, of course, didn't really have to fight with her at all. Never do. You know, she's a very, very strong filly there. And it's been a joy to ride with her already. Like, it's just good to finally have girls I'm not losing in this game. <laughs> Seriously, like, eight, over 80% of my Gallup Racer 2004 videos have been with me just losing my fillies or not having good ones or both. So, like, now that we finally have girls that are doing better than the boys sometimes and just they're so strong, you got Butterfly Effect. She absolutely just takes off on them and then just... Yeah, she's just her racing by herself, and there she is. Absolutely getting it done. So we obviously need to race her internationally next. And um, I think she can definitely handle those horses, too. She's got the stats for it, without a shadow of a doubt. So we just need to get her over there. Oh, Cook is saying nonsense. Um, but our relationship has improved to friendly, has it? Yeah. <laughs> Cook and Pink both. I swear they just copy each other. Like, when the one stops liking me, the other one stops liking me. And then when the one starts liking me again, then just... I swear, they, they work together so much, man. Because our relationships with them always rise and fall, like at the exact same time coincidence I think not I think they both are just followers of each other the only ones we have bad relationships with are Franck and Silver now Franck is weird 
Like, his shouldn't be dislike at all. We used to be really close with Frank, but he just he hasn't had my horses or he hasn't had good horses, which is not my fault. <laughs> I shouldn't be punished for that. And then Silver is just irrelevant. I just do not care about Silver. Like, I really don't. Like, Silver just doesn't cross my mind, so. Um, stargazing. Butterfly effect. Bolero, you're good. Okay. She moves up to S from that win. Seven wins and nine starts. Two gray ones already for Lady Butterfly. So she's got a win at eight furlongs. And yeah, two wins at eight furlongs. Obviously. So she's already going for that Myler title. Look at her stats, man. We don't know where her heart and temper is, but she is really strong. He's really strong, honestly. So that's that's awesome. I mean, for breeding, that is fantastic. Yeah, Golden Oaks. I mean, can we run her in Europe? I'd actually like to do that. I really want to see what she's capable of. Yeah. We're going to run her in the 1,000 Gs against, against the gals on the turf. I'm curious to see how she handles that. Like, better sooner now while I'm in rhythm with her. Like, there's no sense to really wait. I think she's proven her worth. Moonbee, did I run with you? Oh, yeah, the Royal Cup. I just I thought I put you in a race. Five wins for Moon. Still kicking strong, too. Um, We're going for Myler. Eight furlongs. Actually, we can race you in Europe, too. Honestly. Regal S, probably. Or the Queen Mile for the turf. The GWS turf. Mmm. Well. Okay, we're in the... Hmm. Like, I could run him in the Regal S, but I don't know if i do that, if he'll be ready for the Queen Mile. That's the thing. I mean, the Royal Cup was... March. Actually, he might be okay. It's only been three weeks, and he's right back in the blue. You know what? Yeah, let's see if running him in that mile is even going to be worth it. Because if, if we struggle in the Regal S, I don't think running in that GWS turf mile race will be any better. So, I mean, he's been running really well. I mean, I, I would tend to think maybe he could actually be okay with that. But I'm not sure yet. We'll see. We shall see. Okay, Golden Boy is up. In the Azalea Cup, we should be the favorite, but we're not X, X Factor, really? I feel disrespected, bro. <laughs> I feel so disrespected. That's unbelievable. I mean, seriously. No shade to X Factor. I, I, We've used her. She was fantastic. I won a lot of races with her. Like, I get it. She's a great, she's a really good horse, but, I mean, is it, is it the distance? Does Golden Boy have bad stamina? Like, why is our dude not the favorite over X Factor? <sighs> Maybe the distance is what the AI are supposedly concerned about. I still feel disrespected either way. I'm going to stand my ground on that one. We'll see if my my feeling of disrespect is warranted or not. I guess we shall see. All right. Good start here. And we're off in the Azalea Cup. X Factor is going for the lead, as she always does. Uh, it's always a joy when the favorite is a front runner. That's because, like, I think you have to be more conscious of your timing, for sure. Like, you have to, you have to essentially catch the favorite napping. But if you don't do that, then um, you know, then you can end up losing the race right there. Because typically, the favorites, 
that run in the front runner position with the AI, they're usually hard to catch. Like if you goof it up, like you're not gonna really win that race. Now if they're running if their horse is running like in the midfield or towards the back, you can still maybe beat them. Um, more often than not. But if they're at the front, like that they are hard to catch. You have to have the right horse, because every horse isn't gonna be able to catch a really strong front runner. Okay, so golden boy. Okay, having to move up. Okay, here we go. Coming for X Factor. Let's go. Good run. Come on, Golden Boy. You got it, man. Dig in, dude. It's Golden Boy in the 12 on the inside. X Factor. She is out of this fight. Nope. Maybe she's she's climbing back at us. Stretch burst from Golden Boy. Put some respect on my dude's name, man. Come on. <laughs> Put some respect on my dude's name. That's why I said I felt disrespected. Come on. Close race, but that was a that was a win. That was clearly a win. <laughs> like X Factor, no offense. No. Golden Boy is a little bit better than that. <sighs> she stayed close. Hats off to her. She's a great horse, but like we should have been the favorite and we were and we won. Of course loss. I could care less. Spread was double S. Good win. Great win for Golden Boy. Just showing his worth, man. Showing his worth. <laughs> That's why I said I felt disrespected. Because I'm just like, he, he can win this race. I don't, like, whether it's close or not, he can win this race. Certainly over X Factor, and guess what? We won the race over X Factor, so. You know, the game disrespecting me as always. What, what What's really new, right? Uh, general reason it's up in a G2 and I gotta get it going with him cause like I said underachieved but his stats are good and his abilities well the stats that I like are good um, and it's his abilities I really want to breed in strong heart and persistency Getting those on really strong horses will be very nice, of course. And like I said, I just need to breed him with a really strong brood mare, like a super brood mare, basically. I think doing that would give us a horse with really good abilities and uh, pretty strong stats. Like I'm at, I'm gonna have to make sure the brood mare stats match his best stats and then improves his worst stats for sure like i need to make sure of that so that's why it's like i'm just gonna have to do i'm just gonna have to do careful breeding with him like i just can't breed him with anybody i'm gonna have to breed him with the right brood mare for sure and if i can't then i'm not gonna breed him but him with the right brood mare those stats passing on to horses with really Good stats are gonna, well, you know, the abilities, I mean, passing on. Heart, there it is, right there. That's nice. That is so nice. That is so nice to have, man. Perfect timing, too. That's what I mean. And imagine that on a horse with better stats. That can win you a lot of races and get you out of any tight positions. Desperately needed that. That's really needed that for general reason. Get us back in the game here, bud. Good stuff. Let's go. Two wins back to back that we needed again. Felt like a little bit of a slumper course loss. I didn't really feel that, but all right. Never really bothered by course loss. We've won so many races on course loss. It does not actually affect us. Alright, so they're disrespecting Golden Boy. That that that's just great. He moves up to S rating. Golden Boy is eight for eight. He's undefeated. He was seven to seven. He was seven of seven going into that race. Why he should not have been the why why wouldn't he have been the favorite realistically over X Factor? I highly doubt she's gone undefeated. 
absolutely disrespecting me and my boy out here, man. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I do not know how I feel about that. So, we're going to go ahead and run him in Europe as soon as we can. Singapore? Or the Dublin 2000? This race is pretty important. Usually wins just something. Has he already hit his peak? Golly. These guys are peaking so quickly, though. I mean, yeah, fast girl type is still. I guess I should have actually expected that. Maybe I thought his bar wasn't as far down, but it turns out it is, so it's fine. Okay. General reason. Another grade two. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's just getting to his peak, almost right about there. I swear, response has just not changed. It's been stuck at 68 for the longest. What is that about? So weird. I mean, his temper is not good, which, like I said, I've, I've been ignoring that stat on most of my horses anyways. Like, intentionally. Like, it's not it's not hurting us, really. So I'm willing to sacrifice that stat if I can get other good stats. Feel is 51. That obviously has to improve. His feel, his power, and his stamina would all really have to improve a lot with the Broodmare. So I got to make sure she's got, like, double S's in those categories. And then, like I said, everything else she needs to match as well. You raise all of that, you improve his worst stats, you get these abilities on a horse. That is a multi-title winning champion. Recipe for a multi-title winning champion. I do believe it. It has worked for me in this game. I just need the right horses for it. But it's still probably going to take a little bit of time, unfortunately. Fire magic up in the open. Because uh, I don't have anything else for him. Yeah, it's literally why. There's just nothing else for him. Nothing I can do. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the episode, as always. Uh. You know, I mean, I think we're doing okay. Like, surely I've dropped a couple races I wish I could have back, but... I mean, I'm still on target with my goals. Like, we're not missing any of them right now. So... A little bit of timing issues here and there, which seems to just happen every blue moon in... One of my episodes anyways, but as long as we can still win on the right horses, then that's really all that matters. I was going for a late revolution, but it didn't happen. Well, it's a win that should be, um, should be given to that to that degree in an open definitely stronger than that but like I said there was nothing else for him so win is a win though it counts win is a win good stuff fire magic is doing okay like, again, his stats aren't anything I really want to do with breeding, but, you know, he's, um, he's not doing bad, you know. He's getting wins. Still racing consistent. Diamond plans up in the second cup. Fourth favorite. You know, I don't think the game is going to give us favoritism anymore, and I don't think we need that to win with him. Even Link is here. Personal City. A special Aries. Yeah, I mean, decent horses, but I think I can win this on Diamond Plan. And just over odds, like, the game doesn't understand. Like, we can still win with them. But, you know, by nature of their coding, they're just dropping his chances of winning because of his stats. 
It's like, no, I'm racing on him and I'm still winning with him, so... On that merit, he should still be considered the favorite. But of course, the game is not thinking about that, so that would not happen. <laughs> Obviously. But it's fine. Just stay in rhythm with this guy. Okay. 13 guys absolutely left in the gate. And we're going to go ahead and go right to the front with Diamond Plan in the second cup. So we got into turn one. Make sure he doesn't outrun himself here today. It's also a good thing about having a horse like this as a front runner. And I talk about it. Like these are the front runners I like to work with, but they have to be like this good and this strong. If they're not, then I don't enjoy running with them as a front runner because it's too much fighting them for me. Like when they're this good, they just don't fight you like that usually but if they're not this good they will fight you consistently so no seven no revo which i mean we're flying a little bit up here so <laughs> pace is pretty fast but he can handle it of course okay, yeah Keep your cool, brother. Keep your cool. Keep your cool. We're good. Okay, they're going to start running up now. It's fine. It's fine. That's fine. Let's go. Come on, Diamond Plan. Come on, man. Dig in, brother. Dig in. Come on. Ah, oh, man. Tough race. He's fighting. Two is coming up. Ah, two is going to smoke us in the end. It's going to be third for Diamond Plan. Gosh darn it. In all honesty, fair play. Even Link is, I mean, that is a good horse. It is a good horse. Don't know if I could have done anything differently there. Definitely felt we had the chance to win it, but... Uh, definitely a race we could have won I feel but he's still out there for the GWS turf I mean, like I said I would rather run him on the dirt give him a chance to run on the dirt actually thought that's what I was supposed to be doing with him was it not yeah we're supposed to be running him on the dirt I was supposed to run him on the Dirt in the in the Kentucky Derby or no? Am I running somebody else in that race? Wait, wait, wait. Who am I running in the Kentucky Derby? Mm, oh yeah, Secretariat. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Totally forgot. <laughs> Panic avoided. <laughs> Panic avoided. Yeah, Secretariat. I'm going for the dirt title. Okay, so, because, yeah, I mean, there's Diamond Plan can't even run in dirt. The race is really. Caesar Cup could be the first start. I'm kind of curious. Let's, let's do that. I mean, it's fine. Like, we're still doing well with him. Not like he's won every race. I've dropped a couple, but that's not the point. All right, I think everybody's good, right? Butterfly Fetch, you are amazing, my gal. Amazing. Alright, let's see what we got here. Butterfly Fetch, she is up. Okay. It's not the favorite. Root Shark is. By quite a margin. Do they really think Root Shark's better than you? You seem to look like you think so, and I hope that's not the case. <laughs> or you could just be very relaxed today. Which could also be a good thing, actually. Yeah, but they say... Uh, well, you don't look too excited about it either, but... It could just be that both of you are just very relaxed. This doesn't obviously mean that 
you know, you're tired or anything's wrong with you. Winner place. Well, let's go for the win, of course. I mean, Ruchark's a good girl, for sure. Like, I don't feel like she pops up in my game a lot in my races, but when she does, I mean, I know it's always going to be pretty pretty tough. But I, but I think we can dispatch of her. If we really try. And obviously that's what we're going to aim for. Because Butterfly Flight is a fact is proven to be really strong. And we shouldn't doubt her now. She gets a good start as always. Stay in the front, stay in the front. Let's go, let's go. Get up to speed, get up to speed. The five is really running hard here. Radiant Oasis. Bro, you're not even gonna win the race. Come on. Like why does this horse want to set a ridiculous pace like this? My goodness, relax. Like who is that? Nielsen. Get him on our control. Or whatever. Like No reason for us to have been running that fast at that point, like at all. The rest of the field had already settled, like we did not need to be five lengths ahead. Okay, they're coming now. That's fine. Come on, come on. Is this the favorite that Turner's on? I mean, McCown, Root Shark. Okay, she got discouraged. She lost the head-to-head, -head, but she's still fighting back. Oh, wow. So she lost the head-to-head. -head. She looked that horse in the eye and kept going. What? <laughs> what? She lost the head-to-head -head and got discouraged. You saw the bar. Like, it was gray. But she was still determined. <laughs> what? What? What does that mean? Because, like, it didn't even go back from gray to red. It just stayed gray. Like, literally, she lost the head to head, but she stayed with the horse close enough to look the horse in the eye again. And then that horse fell all the way down to 11th place. I mean, the seven. Yeah, Rude Shark. The favorite. Beat us in the head to head, but Butterfly Effect didn't stop. She bounced back against that horse in that head to head, and Rude Shark called it a day. Like, Butterfly Effect eff effectively crushed Rude Shark's spirit after she was discouraged about getting past. And she still won clearly by five lengths. What? <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> what on earth just happened? I don't know when's the last time I've actually won a race like that. Where, like, my horse lost the head-to-head -head and then came back and essentially won its own head-to-head. -head. You know? Like, I swear that's, like, never happened or it's happened less than five times. Usually once my horses lose head-to-heads and they get discouraged, like, usually it's over. Like, we don't come back and win the race. It's so like the fact that like she lost that head to head, but like it didn't actually affect her momentum at all. In fact, it, it's like it gave her a boost. Like she dug in. And essentially crushed Rude Shark's spirit and sent Rude Shark down the eleventh place. That's unbelievable. Well, I've been saying she's the real deal, so this shouldn't be a surprise. And anybody that has been doubtful should not be surprised. And shame on you. Shame on you for doubting Butterfly Effect. She is the real deal here, people. I mean, look. This is where she lost the head-to-head, -head, but then she bounced back. She dug in. She lost the head-to-head, -head, then she bounced back. And then, yeah, Rude Shark was just done at, after that point. That is unbelievable, man. It really is. And she wins by five lengths with double S on the stretch. Let's go. What a win for Butterfly Effect, man. Honestly. What a great win. 
Formal Opera is up, aka Secretariat, aka Kentucky Derby, aka Triple Crown Potential Winner. And he's three years old. Perfect time to uh, get some really good stuff going for him. And it starts obviously with the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, let's just get this done, man. Let's get it done and rock and roll with it. It's a beautiful day for racing. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Never had a Triple Crown winner in this game. It would be... Nice to do this with, obviously, one of the best, if not the best, Triple Crown winner of all time in the late great Secretariat, obviously. And I can literally run him wherever I choose. So as long as he gets out to a good start, I'll just settle him wherever he settles. I think that's the best thing to do. We're the favorite, and whoever the who's it? Social drink, second favorite. I mean, I think that horse is quite below Secretariat, but formal opera, whatever. No, I was gonna say, are you trying to overtake or not? You are. Okay, now I don't want to be bunched in here. He wants to go faster, of course. I do feel like we're just. Ah, oh, he's not happy. Yo, relax, relax, relax. In all honesty, I probably should be running him at the front, shouldn't I? But you're fine. You're fine. You're fine, dude. Relax. You're fine. No, it's a little bit slow. I do feel like it's a little bit slow. But you know how that works out. There we go. There's that closer ability. Let's go. Come on, dude. You're the greatest horse of all time for a reason. Show them why. That closer ability is so nice. I love closers, man. They're so fun to ride on, honestly. I just don't get that same feeling in adrenaline when I'm running on front runners. Like, it's fun, don't get me wrong, but it's something about a horse that can attack from behind and then uh, come to a very, very strong and dominating win. Oh, we're just repeating history here. That's a beautiful f shot there. It's cool to see our, our colors on Secretariats. Really in combination with his, even though his aren't even in the correct colors. Because apparently Tecmo hate uh, American Thoroughbreds for some odd reason. Doesn't make sense, but you know. It is Gallup Racer, and half of the things in this game realistically don't make sense when you think about it, just the way they work. Five special dirt wins. I'm very happy. Now you can ride in the GWS dirt section. Universal Cup, you win such big races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were already doing that, Pink, so relax. You're not telling me anything I wasn't already planning for. Preakness back to back for Secretariat, but uh, I'm confident our boy can get it done. Now, Butterfly Effect. She's exhausted. Look at her stats. Like, she's solid, man. And Heart clearly has to be good. Still don't know where Auto Ability is. Keep forgetting, though. She needs that solo runner and last corner leader. I've, I've been having her sit a little bit off. I need to get her out in front by two lanes, but eight wins out of 10 starts three great ones already i mean she's she's doing well so we need nine furlongs to whatever i mean she's got the stamina to run quite a bit so she's gonna need quite a how long are you gonna need off okay that's too far okay too far well she need i was gonna say you need that much time off no she doesn't i'm just being goofy um, 
these dirts keep popping up and they are they're interesting but like is she a dirt well I guess I'll never know right she's got good stats you know what let's let's throw her on the dirt because I mean if I don't run her on the dirt we will never know honestly like we have to see yeah we'll take a chance with her on the dirt I don't know if she'll be the favorite because again I don't know if that's actually I don't know if that's her type Fire magic, yeah, you're just... 49 Stam, how did you get that? My goodness, I know Gemstone Stam is like C, I think. It's not even a D. Young Mile Cup? Who else can run in that? Golden Boy? No, you're running the special one, okay. For my opera, you're already set up. Okay, well, yeah. Um, That's fine. Uh, Fire magic, we'll, we'll throw you in the Young Mile, man. I mean, let's see what you can do. Yeah, we should be good with everybody else. Yep. All right. Well, let's see how this goes. Big goals this year, obviously, for everybody that can chase a title, we're chasing it. Everybody that can chase a GWS category, we're chasing it. Fire Magic and the Young Mile Cup is the favorite. But I feel like I keep forgetting how to run you. You just have grit. Proceed. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've been doing well with him, but I still feel like, I don't know. We could be winning better. Or doing better. It's weird. It is weird. Do, 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 do. Well, Mr. Fire Magic, let's see what you do, brother. Good start. All right, punches out. What are we worried about? Nobody really. The second favorites here, Radiant Amber. Okay, I mean, I think we can beat that horse. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't, don't get caught in that. Don't get caught in that. Game will try to send you flashing forward at the speed of light. It's like, no, no, we're not doing that. All right, he's feeling comfortable. What is some fast, fast, oh my goodness, fast splits. Well, let's see how he fights back here. He's got a good drive, really good drive. I think he's got this in the bag. Okay. That's, that's very nice from Fire Magic. It's a nice way to dig in there. And get it done. It's a G1. Fire Magic, let's go. We'll take it. Young Mile Cup. With his colors, I like that. <laughs> I'm doing as he should, right? Wins by two lengths. Almost perfect race. Alright, good stuff. Happy for Fire Magic. I need to look at something. Um, so I was at eight for him. I think it was to record something. Oh yeah, Butterfly Fight. I forgot. What was that G1 that she ran? Um... That was the, oh yeah, the Britain, um, whatever, 10, 1,000 Gs, eight. So, that was her third win at eight furlongs. So yeah, she's two away from the mile champ title already. Very good stuff. All right, um, fire magic. Was well, his first grade one? 
I'll take it. I mean, that 49 stamp is not good, but you didn't really show it there at all, so... That's, um, what's his distance? We still don't know. But 49 stamina, I can't... I mean, he just won it at 8. I want to see what he's capable of against European horses. We're going to run him in the Mars S. Let's just see. Because if he can win those races, then, I mean, I'll run him at that level. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm, I don't like the stamina for breeding purposes, but if he can still run at that level and win... Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see where it goes, right? General reasons up in another G2. Expected to finish third. And, um, yeah, I really got to get him some grade one wins, but I just feel like we're struggling with that. So I'm going to have to enter him in the G1 after this race, obviously. Good start. Running downhill. And we'll just let him kind of run because those horses are already ahead of us. And we technically need to be... Well, technically he's really supposed to be running Proceeder. Like, I don't actually have to put him in first, but... Now, these guys are going to probably slow down a lot, but this is fine. Are we on the rough? I feel like we are. I don't want to be on that. Okay. Let's see how he fights here. No strong heart. He's still chasing, though. He's still chasing. General Reason is doing good, but the two is flashing up here. The two horse is coming, but General Reason, he is holding him off here. Aw, oh, come on, General. I think we got that win with General Reason. And, like, yeah, we did. It's a good G2 win. I needed that desperately. I mean, it's two good back-to-back -back wins for him in a G2, so... Yeah. yeah. I gotta get the G1 wins, man. I really do with him. I really need to get those wins. But I'll take those any day. Almost a perfect race. Formal Opera up in the Baltimore Derby, a.k.a. the Preakness, second favorite behind Holy Reception. But we are so close in favoritism that we might as well be co-favorites. So, it means uh, this is our race to win. I gotta win this race, obviously. Like, I really need to focus here. Because I want to get this Triple Crown title and everything going. So, we absolutely have to take this serious. I just don't have dirt horses a lot. And if I do, like they have long road types, so Alright, good start. We'll take it because uh, I think we're going to settle them in anyways. So we are off in the Preakness. Where's Holy Reception? Holy Reception, three horse to the inside. Fair play. We're just going to coast along here. Oh. I mean, according to the game, I'm supposed to be running him as a closer, which, uh, do I really want to commit to that? Not really. I don't want to commit to that. 
But it does help him with that ability, but I think he's fine here. I mean, he can run anywhere, honestly. Remax down, which is a good sign, of course. Okay, let's go. Now let's see if he can claw back here. Come on. Or did I get him started too late? Because those horses up there are not giving up. We're closing in, but it's not coming fast enough. Ah, uh, come on. Ah, oh, man. God, I'm going too late. No preakness. Holy reception sets the record. <sighs> Terrible race, I feel, for myself. And I think um, that track caught me off guard. Because, I mean, I don't really... I haven't run into Preakness in this game less than five times for sure. I'm not used to that track at all, so... I'm thinking it's just kind of a normal progression around turns three and four. I was going to move them up slowly, but fast turns like that, and then if I forget, like, I always get caught out behind, so... Oh, uh, that's a bummer. No Preakness... I mean, no um Triple Crown. Ah. I wish I could have that back, honestly. That sucks. But, you know what? We're still going to run them in the uh, the Belmont as well. And we can still go for the GWS title. It's just like the triple... I mean, you know what? The triple crown is going to happen when it happens. It would have made more sense to get it on this guy. But, like, I'm not going to be redoing these races. That track caught me off guard. That's... It happens. But yeah. So that's a race I surely want back. But um, we can still achieve good things with him. We're not going to let that stop, stop us from doing well. Silver Bullet's up. We haven't raced with him in a while. The America JC2 here. Or, J or JCS. So he's definitely on the decline. But... We'll see what we can win with them at these lower levels before we consider retiring them. Now, if G2s are too hard for him to still win, then obviously we'll have to move him to G3s. But We'll see. too far oh man really wanted to get that triple crown win honestly I mean only just because of the significance of the title and you know that, that whole series as a whole but yeah like imagine that there's a title like that for our other three-year-old horses like Butterfly Effect, like, or, you know, Golden Boy, Golden Boy who's undefeated, like, imagine if they could run on the dirt, or if there was a title for them, like the Triple Crown, but just on turf, it'd be the same thing, you know what I mean? So, it's only just because it's just a special series and a special title that it has any significance. Outside of that, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal, really. We'll get it when we get it. Quite honestly, I would much rather focus on the other titles and the other bigger races for sure. Like, we haven't had dirt horses around anyways for a while, so once we get some more going, we'll, we'll be paying more attention to that every year. It's a good runoff for Silver Bullet here. Last corner leader. Gotta get that. Come on, stay strong, my guy. A nine is coming. Nine is coming. Nine is really rolling up and um, just going to catch us out. Stamina still hurts with this guy a little bit, but it's a close second. 
And he showed a good effort, so I'm not upset. Yeah, I'm not upset about that at all. Fair play. Golden Boys up in the Dublin 2000. First time we've raced him internationally. And he's already a favorite. That's obviously a good sign. So, yeah, this is our race to win. With Golden Boy. Like, finally, they want to put respect on his name. Like, they didn't have him as the favorite against X Factor in that last race. And now they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's definitely the strongest horse. Like, come on, man. Show my horse some more respect. Rough track, okay. This is a tough dude. His toughness rating of 66 may not show it, but he is a tough guy. For surely. Very strong right from the jump. That's what I like to see. Yeah, this win is ours. This win is ours. Just have to make it happen. Good start here. And she always gets out pretty well. I wonder how long he'll still be good for after his peak. Because, I mean, his stats are still uh, pretty decent. So he's not having a major drop-off too quickly. Yeah, I wonder how long he can actually be strong for. Because his growth type is fast, so... We'll see. Provident time. Why is that horse always like the second favorite? I swear like that horse has never beaten us. In any races I've been in. So that horse has never beaten us. Come on, golden boy. Oh, I'm overwhipped. Oh, I butchered it. I butchered it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my goodness. I lost my focus. I. <laughs> uh, <ooh. laughs> Nerve. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I butchered that race. Butchered it. Easy grade one win for him. He was undefeated, and I've ruined it because I've overwhipped him and missed time to spurt. Uh, I don't know why I have races like that. I really don't. Moonbees up in the Regal S. Well, I messed it up with Golden Boy. I don't want to obviously mess it up with Moonbee as well. But usually when that happens, I know it's probably a time, probably a sign it's time for me to uh, get off the game. Because I notice that's when it actually happens a lot, usually. That usually happens when, um, yeah, it's time for me to stop playing. My focus is just not there, man. But again, it's not like Gallop Racer is really a super, mm, you know, Brainiac fo focus game. But when it comes to timing your spurt, for sure, and those things, you, you do have to be mindful of that. Because if you miss it, you know, like I did, and then if you over whip on top of that, just one too many taps, literally just one extra tap. And you know. Oh, that was a blown race. Honestly, that's that's a, that's annoying. 
I really need to be more mindful of like saving again because that's a race I, I would reload to save for, for sure. It's like just having those losses are not good, man, especially when they, you know, didn't need to be. But what are we going to do, eh? Okay, let's see what Moonbee does. He's got the gap. Will he show us any speed here? He's digging in. Moon is digging in really nicely. And the, off he goes. So Moonbee can win. Essentially on the international level. <laughs> well, I messed it up with Golden Boy, but I got it right with Moonbee. When's the Regal S? By a couple of lengths. Three and a half. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Weird things with me in this game. Like, I blow an easy race like that with Golden Boy, but then I win that pretty easily with Moonbee. And I think Golden Boy is still statistically stronger. They want general reason in the spring mile? Well, we can't run him in that. Queen mile? No. Who was I testing out in grade threes? It wasn't general reason. We just ran him in a grade two. Seven to eleven. We're going to run him in the London Prince. I want to see how he handles an international race. You know, Silver Bullet in a G3. I was going to put you in that anyway, so that's fine. Diamond Plan's good. Stargazing, yep. Butterfly Effect. Fire Magic, you're good. Golden Boy. We got to try you back in Europe, bud. That was my fault. We are not waiting this long. They're crazy, eh? One bad race with the horse, and they're just like, oh, do you need this too much time off? Like, no, we don't need this much time off. He is fine. We would save him for the summer sprint. That would... Long Beach Cup. I feel like I've never done this race before, and that's on the dirt. Can he run... Is His dirt rating is not the greatest. I mean, that's... That's entertaining to do the Long Beach Cup, because I feel like this race hardly pops up for me, but could we really win that, you know, like, I'm not sure how he is on the dirt, um, how quickly do you recover, wow, he recovers really quickly, we could run him on a dirt race before just to see, if there's one available, like a Dirt G1. I don't know if there's going to be one available, but we'll see. Wow, we could have ran him in the Caesars Cup. Gosh dang it. That would have been a good test. I'm just curious if he's good on the dirt. Tokyo Derby. You see, if I run him in the Tokyo Derby, he'll only be in the green for this Long Beach Cup. So he won't be running that at 100%. But, honestly... I'm curious. Let's see if we can win the Tokyo Derby with him. The dirt rating is not good, really, but if he's strong enough to win on the dirt, that would be a really good thing to know, actually. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Okay, well... Let's race on, shall we? I was going to stop after that one, but you know what? Let's get a couple more in. Moon Trapper, up in a grade two. Winner place. I 
I don't see I'm just gonna keep racing Moonbee as long as possible. I might even gonna stop her after a certain year. Just gonna race her as long as possible, because let's be honest, like our brood mares that we have now, you know, unfortunately the game takes them away from us eventually at some point. What if that happens at an in and well at an unfortunate time? And then we're, we're limited on brood mares in, in the pasture. Which we shouldn't be. I mean, I think most of our girls now will be able to be retired. But just in case they're not retired yet. Like, what if they're too good to retire? You know, then we just we need to keep them on track to improve, you know, their breeding status as much as possible. Especially if they're still capable of it. So if we're ever limited and we need somebody, Moon Trapper could still be a good good one in there just to see like she doesn't have really I mean at her peak she didn't have super crazy stats but she had a couple of decent ones and like I said I mean I didn't really want to struggle with her in G1s okay, this is where the race wants. but again I think she's like the opposite of like a general reason I feel like if you find a really strong sire to breed with her it wouldn't be terrible. She's very consistent for the most part, and I always like that in my horses, which you guys know. If a horse can prove its consistency, I, I like to get that going in a couple of horses. Because once you have that consistency, you just build st good stats on top of that, honestly. Come on, Moon. You got plenty of stamina left still. Good win. So she gets a G2 win there that she needed. I feel like it's been a minute. So she could still do that. That's what I'm saying. Like, she's not a bad horse. I mean, she's not like the grade one level, you know, you're used to or whatever. But she can still win on those levels like that. And, um, you know, I like that. I mean, she, she's, e she's very easy to ride, too. That's the thing. Like, I don't have to, like I said, I don't have to struggle with her. We don't have to fight with her. Like... She's extremely easy to ride. And you guys know how I am about horses like that. That's like Pink Gemstone. You know, was Pink Gemstone the best? No, but she was very, very consistent, very strong, very good. And she was very easy to ride with. And look at what Pink Gemstone has kind of been able to, to bring to us so far. And Moonbee, you know what I mean? Like, Moonbee has got six G1s already. 10 wins and 18 starts. Like, Pink Gemstone has proven from him that she's a good broodmare. And Fire Magic as well. 5 wins and 8 starts on a grade 1. Pink Gemstone is proving to be a good broodmare. So that's why, like, Moon Trapper, technically speaking, she's still kind of in that same category. The only downside also to her is no abilities. I mean, she is from Desert Diver and Ant B. So good, good pedigree. And obviously, you know, more of her stats were in the 70s. But that temper is not good at all. But like I said, like, it doesn't bother me. She she never really gives us an issue. So she's really like a pink gemstone type of horse. That feel isn't good either. So we would need a sire, a really, really strong sire, to improve that speed and the stamina. Speed staying stamina. The heart should remain the same with the breaking. Feel and temper would have to come up a lot. But like I said, I mean, temper I've been kind of ignoring as long as I can focus on the other stats that make the horse really strong. So we could try to obviously improve temper quite a bit with feel. Her grow type is fast. But she has a, a good distance, 9 to 14. You know, southpaw. Yeah, some abilities on a horse like that would actually be really nice. That that would help it for, like, G1s for sure. And definitely, like I said, some stronger stats. So, long term, I mean, if we have the space, like I said, I'm still considering her. That's why I'm doing this thing to begin with. I just want to see how much we can get with her. Like I said, I don't, I don't think she's G1 ready anymore. But, I mean, who else is going to run in these races? Like, the Fur S and the Paris Mile? I have to keep that open. I feel like one of the boys might be able, one of the the stronger boys might be able to. And the London Mile, same thing there. Like, 
there any just regular domestic G1 she can run in? No. Summer GP. Does she run 11 for long? Yeah, she's 9 to 14. You know what? We have nothing to lose. Wins are wins. Hmm. I didn't have a good grade three, but... None of those G2s were appetizing, unfortunately. So Butterfly Effect, she reaches double S as well. So we got three of our horses right now at double S. Moon Me, Butterfly Effect, and he's stargazing, which Butterfly Effect, she is strong, man. Western Tiger and Irish Fleet. My gosh. Kind of annoyed I didn't like breed like them together like consecutive years. I could have just had a lot of horses like this already, just from those two. Like, the whole left side is, like, mid-70s and higher. Oh, I love that so much. Butterfly effect. Yeah, she definitely is going to be the start to that super horse for sure. Because, I mean, her stats already, I think they're stronger than Irish fleets were at this point. Yeah, my gosh, she is really, really strong. Absolutely love that. Strongest broodmare. Strongest filly will have to broodmare ever, really. In this game, for sure. We haven't had a filly with stats like that, ever. He started getting these up in the spring mile with straight impulses, the second favorite. I'm not worried. You shouldn't be. As long as he's on the right track. So what did I write for him? Counterclockwise, not good. And again, he's on a counterclockwise track. They're giving us favoritism. But it's like, he has that ability. Which still means like... It's not ideal. I feel like there's, they're just giving us favoritism because of his stats and just his overall pedigree, but like... Inherently, when I've been on any horse that's had that ability, it has not been a good thing. Don't get ahead of yourself, just relax, you're fine. Alright, um, he's Max Stam. He's doing good. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's see how he digs in here. He's got plenty of stamina. Run them down, man. Run them down. He digs in nicely here. And he gets away. It's another G1 for the Stargazer. Easy stuff. But we will take it because that's obviously what we want. I'm waiting for a better picture and they just keep sending these awful angles. So that's a nice close up. The shadow roll. Good win there for the Stargazer. Of course, lost could care less. He's doing exactly what he needs to do, man, and that's win grade ones. Formal Opera. Up in the. Uh, Belmont Stakes were the favorite here. Second favorite is Floral Crush. 
I wish I would have won that Preakness. So bummed about that. But like I said, it'll happen when it happens. But winning this race will be special. Because I don't think I've won this race in this game. So let's see if we can make this happen. Do, 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 do. Light the gates. Realistic. And we're off in the Belmont Stakes. Here with Secretariat, a.k.a. Formal Opera, or Formal Opera, a.k.a. Secretariat, however you want to say it. Now, in the Preakness, I got him going way too late, so that cannot happen this time. Got him going way too late, and we didn't catch the horses in time. Like, I gotta make sure I get him out, right? To make sure we overtake these horses. Oh, Revolution, because again, the game probably wants him to be at the very back. Like I said, I just don't want to run him that far back. I feel like if he can run at the front, we should run him at the front. But, maybe I should take advantage of him having that closer and use that to my advantage, since I really like to race on closers. He's max stam, so he's good. Now, I want to make sure we're in striking distance, because those dudes are kind of far up there. And this is what I was talking about with the, the Preakness track, you know? Like, those turns three and four, they were so quick, man. This was what I thought that track was going to be like. So I don't think we're going to get closer, but let's see. Well, we should be able to dig in here. Come on, man. We're the favorite here. And we are not catching. Did I mistime his spurt again? I think I did. How did I do that? Social drink just smokes us in the in the Belmont Stakes. What is what? Like the favorite came. No, I mean we were the favorite, obviously, but in five. Bad. The game is like punishing me for actually running him outside of like a closer. So weird, Tecmo. So, so weird. Ah, uh, so weird. Turner, I don't care what you're saying, as always. You're giving me nothing valuable. Ah. Well, I was doing so well with him. How did I... I mean, he's... I mean, he is a dirt horse. Like, I've been winning with him on the turf. Oh, well, actually, no, I've won with him on the dirt before. I mean, obviously, that's where he's supposed to be. Um, that's a bummer, man. I feel like I blew both of those races. Like, he really has to run, like, as a closer. 8 to 12. I mean, that summer sprint, like, I just... I don't really want to put him in that. The Long Beach Cup. Did I say I was saving somebody else for that race? Like, who... Not you, not you. Diamond plan, you're in the Caesars. No, not you. I thought I was saving somebody. No? Maybe not. 
Thought I was saving somebody for that, but maybe I wasn't. Well, no. It makes sense to run him in this anyway, so that's fine. Well, with the pressure of the triple crown off of me, maybe I can actually focus and win those races like I need to. Okay. Well, we'll see. Um, let me get a quick save in. A couple more races left. Just thought about it. Um, Two-year-olds are going to be ready to race next month, right? That'll be a good starting point for the next episode. Exciting new two-year-olds on track. Um, so we'll finish. We have a lot of races this month. My gosh. Well, we'll see. How many we finish? I am tired, so uh, I'm not going to keep playing too long. Like I said, it should have probably been stopped a while ago, honestly. Fire Magic is up in the Mars stakes. I decided I wanted to see what he could do here against uh, international competition based off of his last G1 win. From Regal Stone, or excuse me, Regal Soul, out of Pink Gemstone. <laughs> Regal Stone. I really could have named him that anyways. Really could have named him Regal Stone. But that seems generic, doesn't it? So yeah, Fire Magic works better. Much better name. Much cooler. So we're expected to finish fifth, which I think is realistic. But let's, let's see if he can pull one out of the bag. It's off to a good start. That's Mr. Fire Magic. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, I've won my grade ones on pretty much all my other horses that I've needed to win. But, like, with Formal Opera, I've just bombed, you know... The, uh, the Preakness and the uh, the Belmont. And it's like the game really punished me for running him as a proceeder, even though like all of his triangles are shaded and they want him run as a closer. But <sighs> yeah, whatever. I'm just gonna have to really start running him as a closer now, I guess. I mean, I know that definitely helps with that ability, but I mean, we've won without doing that. Did I start him too soon? No, nope. revolution there for fire magic. I got nervous there. I'm like, did I start him too soon? Because why isn't anybody going? This is going to be a big win for fire magic, guys. Holy cow. I mean, I don't think this guy is supposed to be this good. Five horse was coming too. I don't know. That's going to be close at the wire. I think it's still Fire Magic. And it is. Fire Magic with a huge grade one win. Oh my gosh. I gotta admit, this guy is fighting a lot harder than I thought. Ah, I wanted that photo right there. Thought I was gonna have a little bit longer for it. Well, that's fine. Mars S win for Fire Magic. <sighs> yeah, this guy's uh at eight furlongs. Mile champ title for Fire Magic. Perfect race. I mean, I'm not doing bad with him, honestly. I mean, Regal Soul was a very good horse, obviously, and Pink Gemstone, like I said, was really strong, so. Hey, I'll go with it. General reason, he's up in the London Prince. He's going to finish fourth. These are eager judges here. Tough horse. Yeah. I need, I need to keep general reason in competitive shape, honestly. I mean, he's only an A-ranked horse, so it's not like he's an S-ranked, obviously. But still, I feel like we need to win these. 
as many of these as we can. Almost a perfect start. Alright, so general reason, uh, he really wants to run as a, like, a proceeder right there with the runner. Like, he just, he doesn't want to be in first for whatever reason. It's pretty much what his leg type is. He doesn't want to be in first, but he, if he is, he'll be okay with it. Can't help but feel like we're running kind of fast up here. Yeah, like, let's settle down, please. Thank you. Okay, so he's handling the course well. Let's see what he does, man. Oh, Rebo. Let's get him on the move. Let's get him on the move. Let's see how he fights. Still think I need to get him actually ahead of these horses, though, for that strong heart to, t to kick in. He's fighting hard, man. He's got a lot of stamina left still, and he's fighting hard. But unless he has a last minute ability, Six is going to roll right past us. He finishes third. It's a good effort, but ah, it's a race I want to win with him. It's a race I want to win. But for an A-ranked horse, that's not terrible. Spurt could have been better, I think. Fire magic really impress really impressing me here. Moves up to S. He was B ranked. He jumped two levels with that win. Two grade one wins back to back though for the guy. I mean, and two really good strong mile wins, so like I said, that stamina is so bad. But um Stamina is awful, man. Like, how did he get 48? That just doesn't make any sense. Like, his stats are okay. You know, no, nothing's crazy. So it's like, for him to be winning like that is pretty, uh, like, not telling me his distance or anything. Hmm. Can you run on the dirt? You don't know. I mean, I, I have really nothing to lose with him, but I... I think I should keep that open. You know, let's not look that far ahead. Let's summer sprint. I mean, you're not ready for that. Super sprint. I mean, he doesn't have this super mile cut to put him in the GWS. Ugh. I mean, I feel like I could, I could save this race for somebody else, but he's already won two races at a mile. I, I might as well. Like I said, I just hate that, you know, just the stamina is so bad for breeding, but if he can win and we can breed him with a really good brood mare, I mean, he could... We'll see. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Uh, who else do I have to put in the race? Moon, yeah, they want you to grade two. Like no. Now Moon, I definitely want to put in the GWS. Um, summer Sprint. Yeah, I think the Summer Sprint would actually be a good start for him. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think he, he can handle it, certainly. Alright, so, um, I think everybody's good, right? Stargazing. Gotta get you another international. Diamond Cup. Impulse might... They're giving him a handicap in the Diamond Cup? I mean, yeah, we've been on a roll with him. <laughs> I've never had them... I've never had that with one of my own horses. Receive a handicap for the Diamond Cup. Wow. Wow. They're saying he's that strong. <laughs> 11 wins, 16 starts, 5 G1s, and some pretty big G1 wins. And like I said, he's got the uh, all-rounder title already. And he's stargazing us from Western Tiger out of Lee's Gold. I feel like Lee's Gold, she gives us really good horses. Would you guys not agree? She gives us really good horses. And, like, statistically speaking, again, read off her stats. Um, she's got three C's, two D's. And then the A's and S's are just in power, heart, speed, and staying. So, yeah, those are important good stats to have. But her temper, toughness, feel, breaking, response, those are all, like, below average. And she's somehow giving us, like, really strong horses. Like, he's stargazing and whoever else. Like, how is that golden boy, you know? Like, what? That's what I mean, man. Sometimes you can get horses like that from a, a parent that doesn't have, like, crazy great stats. That's why I do consider everybody for breeding. Because I'm like, hey, this horse with the right whatever, the right sire or the right broodmare could give us a super horse. And that's what's happened with Lee's Gold. I mean, I did well with her, but her stats, again, are not the greatest for an S double S horse. So the fact that when we use her for breeding, she's giving us really, really strong horses. With the right sire, most importantly, you see the result. So that's why I do consider a lot of my horses for breeding, because I'm like, hey, you with this type of horse could give us a super horse. I figured that out. Zero bullets and a grade three, huge handicap. Expect to finish 11th. Well, that's depressing, isn't it? Let's see how he does. Yeah, I would like to win more with silver, but, you know, might be hard to. It's feeling good, though. Good rhythm here. Really good run. Well, you know, you can still kind of uh, make some magic with silver, apparently. Supposed to finish 11th in this grade 3. Honestly, I wonder why. Like, the last grade 2 we ran with him, we, we finished 2nd, and it was an extremely close race. Why 11th for a grade 3? Uh, uh, okay. Sure, Gallup Racer. Sure. Perfect race. Yeah, makes total sense. Eleventh. Is that a joke? And I took that personally. <laughs> Diamond plans up in the Caesar Cup. Expected to finish fourth. 
Well, we'll see how we can do. Yeah, it's a beautiful night for racing. Blah, 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 blah. Sedate so ruler with the record here. Really? I just um, wish we would have really won those races with uh, Formal Opera for the Triple Crown. Still bummed about that. I bet Diamond Plant's supposed to be up here. Yeah, just bummed about it. I just felt like those races, I just, you know, for whatever reason, just did not zero into as much as I wanted to win them. You know, because then we just won the grade one with him recently, so it's like, yeah. I feel like I ran him a little bit too hard, possibly. It's a long way to go, man. I definitely feel like I ran him too hard, for sure. Yep. Well, that's a race I want back, like the others. Ugh. I did say it in this episode. It's time for me to get off, even though I've still been having success, but. Yeah, terrible spurt. I really should have just kept him where I had him, honestly. Like, I did not need to send him to the front like that. Like, I don't think that was necessary, even though that's obviously where you should have been. But, um. But, yeah. Ugh. What a bad race. What a terrible race. But, Diamond Plan is not a dirt horse. He is a turf horse. So, you know, I was trying to go for that dirt title with him, obviously, but I feel like we're struggling to win with him on the dirt a little bit. So, I mean, we could go back for the GWS, but... Is that worth it? Are we trying to win like a dirt title? Like I said, I've struggled on the dirt. And we haven't actually won a race with them. Oh well, no, we won the heaven on the turf. Second cup, we came in third. We dropped two with them. Uh, do I put you in the GWS? Because who else is five years old? I mean... Silver Bullet? Yeah, I mean... Is that right? Uh, Platinum Mass is three years old enough. I mean, somebody else could run that too. Like... I don't know what to do with you, man. Super Sprint? Does he have a Sprint title? I thought he did. Yeah, he already... Well, he has a GWS Sprint. Wait, he doesn't act... Oh, he could go for the uh, the Sprint Champ. Why haven't I been doing that? Considering his stamina, that would be so easy. Like, what, what am I doing? Let's go for this. Yeah, Sprint Champ title. Super Sprint. Duh. Easy title. Like, I'm just... What am I even doing? 58 Stam. Like, yeah, you, Eric not thinking. What? What is new? Okay. General reason. I'm going to keep you in these competitive G1s. 7 to 11. 
I'm going to keep you running against cup, tough competition. GWS, I mean, I don't, I don't think we're, we're going to do that. No. Leads us. We'll run you there. Like, I could have been moving towards a sprint champ title with diamond planned already, and I'm just randomly putting them in races. Like, I just don't need to put them in. Yeah, the dirt title would have been nice, but, like, I don't have the sprint champ. That's a much easier title to get if you don't actually have, like, a real dirt horse. So, why well, I'm completely missing it, I don't know. All right, let me finish these races. But uh, before that, let me just do a time sync here because uh, it's been a long recording session. I'll make sure everything is good, obviously. And uh, actually, we'll get back to the last part of this video. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, this is the next day that I'm recording this. Um, yeah, this episode is kind of going to start stop at a weird place, but I mean, I guess it makes sense because there's so much racing to do at the end of the year in this game, especially when you have multiple horses in the GWS. So I think what I'm going to do is get through maybe all of... It would be nice to see our two-year-olds make their debut, but I did say I was going to plan that for the next episode. Still only two races here. Um, two races left, and then our two-year-olds would be up. Well, we'll see once as soon as we can get them all racing. Maybe I'll treat you guys to something special here. Dublin Derby. Provident Time. Are there, are there any special horses? Brown Desert. Hates Pack. Ugh. Instant response from Rosie Reason. Personal City. Target required for Silver. This isn't a bad... It's not a bad filly. Normal growth type, 8 to 12. This really isn't a bad filly. Personal City. I'm going to give her a shot. Beautiful. I haven't raced with one of Silver's horses in a while, so... Oh, look at all this stuff we have to get. <laughs> Top five, that's easy. Consistency, A or more. I mean, she doesn't look like she'd be too difficult. Stretch burst, we have to activate. Uh, yeah. So, um, we're going to go ahead and ride that filly. Now, call me a noob if you want. It's fine. I do need to look up. Because I feel like I haven't... I don't have too many horses with stretch uh, burst now. And, like, I haven't ever thought about tapping into it. Like, I just do it, right? Um, like, I just tap into it. I don't think about it. So, gee. I need to know for sure exactly what's the proper way to hit it. Um, stretch burst, where are you? Where are you? Did I pass it? I know I passed it. I definitely passed it. There it is. We'll display amazing acceleration on the final straight. Oh, I thought it actually gave you a little bit more detail. Uh, it is what it is. Like, it's a filly I like. It'd be awesome to have her because I think she has good stats across the board. Not a single bad stat, but likelihood of us getting her probably slim. Moon Trapper's up, though, in the summer GP. I wanted to see how she would fare on a G1. And uh, they're not giving her any chance, really, today. I mean, she's been past her peak for a while. She technically peaked at three. I'm still running her as a five-year-old, and she's still not terrible. That's the crazy thing. Now, uh, yeah, I, I don't think she's G1 capable anymore. But, um... I'm surprised they gave her such a long distance. Like, her stamina wasn't that great. So interesting to me. But like I said, I figured I'd run her in this, uh... This G1, just to see how she would do. And we'll keep... I'm just going to keep running her, honestly. I don't think I have anything to lose. As long as she's still consistent enough to finish in the top five. Let's just see how well she can do. X-Factor with the record here. Now, for this race to go our way, we would need a revolution and just... Everything to go perfectly. Now, a good start will help us. And we're off. I don't care who's the favorite. She gets a little bit of a wild start here. Let's make sure she's understanding where she needs to be. Don't go too fast, my girl. 
So yeah, let's see how she does today, man. Like I said, I think I, you know, I think I should just settle her for G3s because like winning G2s has been a little bit difficult. Even though I know I think we just recently grabbed one not too long ago, but I don't think we can do that like every single time. So Diamond Plans last race, did we win that? Because I have it written in my notes, but like I don't have a result next to it, which is kind of weird. Just still goes to show you how tired I was before I stopped the um, the last recording session. I mean, her stam isn't terrible. It's not what I want it to be at all, especially for a mare. But, um... I'm thinking the, the earliest I'll retire her probably is seven years old. But I would like to keep running her at least to that point. Okay, so she's got two sevens. A revolution is in play here. Okay, let's go now, my girl. Let's go. Let's go. No rebel. It's fine. Let's see how she digs in here. Moon is still going strong, guys. Furlong left to go. I don't think the win is going to happen. Let's see how well she fights uphill. She's still on for a top five. She's going to finish third in the summer GP, and she was only supposed to finish, what, 10th? Come on, man. This is what I mean. She's not a bad horse. She's not a bad horse. She's not like the others that we currently have, but to finish 10th in that race behind Easy Treasure and Regal Soul, <laughs> almost a perfect race. That's not a bad result for our gal. She finishes third in that summer GP. This goes to show you, we can still do some things with her. Yeah, I'm really happy with that, honestly. She's she's so easy to work with. Temper is 25, but like I said, a horse, I think, with a decent fuel rating is not thwarted by that bad temper. And she hasn't given us any issues, so that's an awesome result there for Moon Trapper. But we're switching gears to Butterfly Effect, our main gal. She's the favorite here in the Virgo Stakes on the dirt. Uh, she's not a dirt horse, but we decided to give her a shot here. Winner place goal. I mean, she is solid, man. She's my strongest filly statistically I've ever had in this game. And that's saying a lot for me because, again, we've lost more than half of them. I mean, she is, yeah, she's really strong, Butterfly Effect. From Western Tiger out of Irish Fleet. And we still have Irish Fleet, which is a great thing. So to think a horse like Western Tiger or stronger with Irish Fleet, I mean, amazing stuff here. And this is going to be a broodmare for us even better so we know that we're not getting a single bad stat really from from her and breeding her with a stronger sire that's obviously going to give us our super horses so I, I'm really looking forward to that Virgo Stakes Here we go, with Butterfly Effect, effect blah. Sometimes I want to say Effect, and I don't know why. <laughs> Almost a perfect start, that's how we like it. And we're off in racing, and the Virgo Stakes Butterfly Effect gets out to a great start here. She's going to go ahead and set the pace at the front. And uh, that's exactly what you want from her in the beginning. Make sure she doesn't run herself too hard. But to make sure we stay ahead of the three horse, though. Now three is going to try to run with us, which is fine. That's Frail Fridge, the second favorite with Thompson on board. So, yeah. She's going to want to keep her horse back. We're going to want to keep Butterfly Effect back. But she's got the stamina to, to handle this. That's the great thing. Okay, so she's settled now. And remember, we have Solo and Last Corner Leader both, so I do need to keep her a couple lengths ahead. And fortunately, she has the stamina to do it. And I don't know if we're going to get Solo here. It'd be nice if I did, but apparently it's not going to happen yet, which is fine. And they have a long way to go, and we're just going to coast here.
We still have it. We still have last corner leader. There we go. Give it to us. Kick away. She's got way too much left in the tank. She's too strong. And I got lucky by timing it just there. <laughs> we didn't get solo runner, but we don't need it. Butterfly effect is too strong. She wins on the dirt for her first time in a grade one. She blows the field apart. <laughs> oh, this girl is amazing, man. Butterfly effect. That name has power to it, man. Anybody's familiar with the song from a certain artist, you would know why. There it is. Butterfly effect with the Virgo stakes win on the dirt. No questions asked. No questions asked. She sets the record. <laughs> she sets the record. And wins that. And that is her fourth grade one victory. And that's going to be a nine furlongs on the freaking dirt. That is, like, amazing, man. Sorry, I'm just writing some stuff down. It's absolutely amazing. So that's her fourth grade one victory, guys. Fourth grade one win for Butterfly Effect. She sets the record on top of that. She is doing great things as a three-year-old already. Like, I could care less if she peaks quickly. That will help us because we can get her into the breeding barn sooner. And to think she can be the catalyst for the super horses I've been wanting the endurance horses I wanted. She is going to be the start of that legitimately. Obviously, she's had help through Western Tiger and Irish Fleet, but she is effectively going to be the start because she doesn't have a single bad stat. She really doesn't. She got out to a great start. And, uh, man, what a girl. <laughs> I mean, she has been on a roll. I feel like she's stronger than Chasing Hearts, wouldn't you agree? I mean, statistically speaking, she's definitely stronger. But performance-wise, I mean, she's knocking these fields off without much resistance. It's not like these are hard-fought races for the most part. Like, we're winning them clearly. Oh, that's so happy. That makes me so happy, man. It makes me so happy to finally have that horse in her. She's super responsive. She doesn't fight me. She's that that's the difference in having a horse with really strong stamina, man. Like I can even if I don't time my spurts perfectly, as long as I get her going at the right time within that window, she's still okay. She's still strong enough to hang on. And that's the thing. You know, I wanted to wait as long as possible just to ensure that the rest of the field had to work twice as hard to even have a chance. You know, we're still coasting. Now I get her going. Now I give her a tap on the whip. She needed that, and then boom, she's off to the races. She's like, okay, I know it's time to go. And there she goes. There she goes. And the rest of the field was still there, but, I mean, they were never going to catch us with her. And then she pulls away in the end because she's still got the stamina to make it, to make it work. She wins on the dirt. That's her fourth grade and one victory. And she sets the record. 148-2. The butterfly effect continues to dominate. Continues to prove why she's the real... What have I been saying? She's the real deal. Now, we're up with Personal City because I wanted to see if we could acquire this horse. But it's going to be hard. Top 5, we can hit that. Consistency A, I think I can do that. Stretch Burrs activate. I mean... I need to run this horse towards the back. Um, No bad stats. So, like, I mean... I need to get this horse out to a good start, get her settled early, and then time to spurt right. Like, this has to be as close to a perfect race as possible, and that's what makes me a little bit worried. But I have nothing to lose. Like, I have everything to gain, really nothing to lose. Me and Silver's relationship is already not good. So, like, it's, if it gets worse, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I don't race with this horses. I hardly raced with this horses. Dublin Derby, though. If we could win this. Irish Fleet still with the record here. It's a fast gal, man. How long is this race, anyways? I wasn't even paying attention. 12 furlongs? Perfect start. We'll take it. Ah, this is going to be one of those really tricky courses to navigate, isn't it? Okay. Drop back, drop back, please. Drop back, please. We need to save as much ground today as possible. If we do that, the win is certainly ours. Okay, they're bumping me a little bit. I mean, she can settle back here. She's fine back here. 
As long as she's not in last place, she can she can deal with this. And I'm gonna stay right behind these horses, so just in case she wants to like blitz it downhill, this is gonna be like nope. Somebody else is gonna stop you from doing that, and there we go. Just like that. And I'm gonna move her in because I know that horse is gonna move in. Oh, this is perfect. And the ten is just what who is that? Roman minister, and that horse doesn't have a chance. That's not the type of closer I'd want to be on. She's got a seven, so she's in good rhythm right now. She's got a decent temper, so I don't expect her to fight with fight us too much. This is perfect, honestly. I'm not worried about the favorite. Like I'm worried just about running our race, because we take care of our business with her here. You know? Don't get upset. I know you want to go faster, but this is this is what we need to do right now. Beautiful filly, though. I love that she's got the high socks on the back legs and then kind of like the anklets on the front. All right, so. Let's go. Let's go, my girl. Come on, you're right there with them. You can fight. I feel like we'll tap into stretch burst back here, I hope. Ah, come on, personal. Show us something. She's got so much stamina in the tank. Keep driving, keep driving, keep driving. No stretch burst yet? Are we going to get it soon? We got to get it soon, right? They're not going to give it to me at all. We're going to finish fourth. Definitely could have won that race. I didn't realize she was going to have that much left in the stretch. My first time running with her, so. Uh, yeah, well, it is what it is, bro. I like her. Wish I could just buy her out, right? But that's not going to happen. Oh, well. Did the best I could. But yeah, that, that stretch was not timed properly. So, for three-year-old classification, Golden Boy, he hits 134 for the mid. Three-year-old Dirt, uh, Butterfly Effect. She is up there with that last win there in the Virgo Stakes. She goes up to 120. That's awesome. Four-year-olds. On the turf, we have Moon Bee up there. He is a 130 for the sprint. Any of our other, any of our other horses? Diamond Plan still up there. 127 for the mid. Um, let's see. General Reason. He's 127 for the mid. Okay, 121 for the sprint. 124 for the mile. And 127. So General Reason's actually to think. I, I still haven't even achieved what I need to achieve with him. Stargazing, like most of our horses are up here. Four-year-old Dirt, Silver Bullet, still dominating. He's 119 on the long. To think, has he recently won a grade one? I feel like he hasn't. So that's still good that he's actually still leading in the dirt. Oh, Pink's giving me a lovely new debut horse. Who does she give me? Black Ruby. No kidding. I mean, I know about this girl, so I'm not complaining. No abilities, but you know, response rating and feel are not great. But uh, stamina, speed, staying. She's got a normal growth type. She's not going to peak until she's almost five, so I'm not complaining. I'll take Black Ruby any day. <laughs> yeah, I will take her any day. Nine or thirteen. Um, I'm gonna. S well, we'll get her in a race when I. Feel this time. We have four. I have so many horses. This is ridiculous. Cattail, Silent Speaker, Tigress of Stone, and Toxic Blonde. Courtly Lark is available for purchase. Lost Saint, Aunt B. I mean, look at the horses my foals are going to be racing against. I think they're going to be able to beat those horses, but it's going to be a tough first year. I mean, it's going to be a tough couple of years for them. Uh I need to figure out what Diamond Plan won. There's so much going on. Oh, my goodness. Hey, we finished fourth in that Caesars Cup with Diamond Plan. So I do think this is a good place to stop because there's so much that we, we're going to have to do for the remainder of this year. And I think this is going to be properly done in the live stream. I did say that's what I wanted to do. So um, let me get everybody in their races first, and then we'll go ahead and buy the two-year-old. So Moon Trapper. They still want her in the grade twos. I, I'm kind of ready just to drop her to a grade three if it's available, to be honest with you. Because what's her distance? She's 9 to 14, so... 
Like, would she still have a handicap for an open? She would. What's the impulse? 150? Grade 3. Okay, so she she has a slight handicap for grade 3s, but nothing I have to worry about, which is the main thing. But I still feel like it would be easier to win grade 3s with her. Grade 2s, I think, are going to be hit or miss, and she still will carry an impulse for some of these grade 2s, which is weird. Runner in the Sapphire. I'm curious if she wins that race, what that would do for her. I'm going to run her in this grade 3. No, wait. Her ability is Southpaw. So, um... She needs a counterclockwise track for that. Yeah, so I need to try to find a counterclockwise track. That would actually work out for her. I'm going to run this 5 furlongs... I... What's her speed up? 69, okay. Well, that probably... She needs probably a little bit higher speed rating than that. Um. Okay, this is better. It's 10 furlongs. It's a counterclockwise track, so we'll, we'll put her in that grade 3. So she's ready to go. General Reason will be up. The lead us. Silver Bullet is good. Diamond Plan is good. Stargazing. Running the Diamond Cup. Bolero is good. Moonbee should be solid. Butterfly Effect... She is 9 wins out of 11 starts, with 4 of those being grade 1. She is on a roll. Now her heart rating is 55. Her last stat is revealed. Other than that, she's solid across the board. Stamina is about to hit 80. Power is at 92. She is super duper strong. Absolutely love it. Um, we're getting her in the GWS, of course. I just don't know which one. Or we could continue running her on the dirt. But to be honest, let's run her in that Platinum. Platinum S for her GWS hunt. Fire Magic still in the mix. Golden Boy still looking good. Formal Opera. And Black Ruby. We'll figure you out, but let's go ahead and buy the yearlings. Yeah, what special horses are available? Bright Earth can't even negotiate with Franck. 18 Temper. I don't like that growth type, and I'm not. No abilities? Like, no way. Round Saturn. I've never worked with this guy, but that fast growth type, not a fan of those abilities. Is there anybody with really good stamina? Who is that? It's Fresh Devil? Philly. She's a closer. Fast growth type, 5 to 9 furlongs and bears? No thanks. I mean, not like I would buy any of these horses anyways, but, you know, it's always curious to look. Alright, let's get our yearlings. So, Cattail... So start, so breaking's not going to be good. Feel isn't going to be great. Consistency. All right. Well, there's Cattail. Welcome to the, the party. We'll do her tack here soon. And she is from Western Tiger and Swab Buster. So she is the sister of Flying Cowboy. She should be strong enough. Like, we, we don't have to worry. Silent Speaker... Average. Silent Speaker, I think, is from Desert Derby and Irish Fleet. Yeah, this horse could have a chance to still be pretty solid, though, honestly. Should have very good stamina. Should have very good stamina, which I'm excited about. So as long as that's the case, we can probably do a lot with that guy. Tigers of Stone, I think, our best filly from Flying Cowboy out of Pink Gemstone. At least our best filly of this crop. Only 36k, but ugh. Wow. Why such low stats? That's not good, is it? I haven't seen a horse with stats that low in a while. Watch. What if she's a flop? <laughs> Flying Cowboy and Pink Gemstone. I mean, neither of them had long growth types, so that's that's really concerning. And, like, in the barn, her stats looks pretty good. Aunt B is back. Yeah, that's um, Lost Saint. Uh, that's really concerning for Tigris of Stone. I'm not going to lie to you. Toxic Blonde, let's see. 91k. Has she been the highest? Yeah, she's definitely been the highest. I had a feeling, man. That temper's not going to be great, but um, she's looking solid. From Blue's Breeze out of Lee's Gold. Lee's Gold has been a really awesome broodmare for us. Uh, we have so many horses now. My gosh, what am I doing with my life in this game, honestly? This is a lot for me. I know, you know, some people, you guys are okay with playing with a lot. For me, this is a 
like a lot. <laughs> um, Tigris of Stone. I want to get her in a grade three right off the bat. Well, Toxic Blonde actually. I want to get her in a grade three right off the bat. Tigris of Stone is there a grade three for you? They want all of them in a grade three, but how is that possible? They all can't run in grade threes. Tigris of Stone. I am very worried about her. Just run her in the six furlongs. Um, Silent Speaker. They want to run you eight in a grade three. You know, I'm okay with that. And then Cattail. We're going to run you in a seven furlong open. I do kind of want to see what these yearlings are about. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Black Ruby, we'll just get you in this open. So here's what we're going to do. I mean, silence, that's the thing, though. Like, there's so many races to still do. We're not going to get a chance to watch everybody run. How many races do we have in July? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven more races? Could we do that? Let's see. This episode has been going on for so long. I'm really curious. Because at least... Well, we wouldn't actually get a chance to watch any of the yearlings run. I just noticed. So, never mind. I mean, there's, there's still going to be a lot of racing to do. Uh, from August to the end of the year. So, I do think this will be a good point to stop the episode. As much as I want to keep playing and figure out what they're about. But this episode's already been long enough. And like I said, there's still so much to do. And I, I, will, I would like to save the yearlings debut for live stream i think that'll be a really special time for you guys for whenever this video is posted i mean i should be live streaming within 48 hours um of this video being posted which i expect it to be posted let's see i would say wednesday yeah i think i'm gonna post this video on wednesday which means i plan on live streaming either thursday or friday probably thursday Probably Thursday. That's when I plan on live streaming. Yeah, I'll say Thursday. So it's going to be a very busy week for the channel for sure. Very busy week. But uh, hopefully you guys will be in store for that. Guys, we have a lot going on here. A lot. But, uh, you know, we have double S stargazing, double S moonbee, double S butterfly effect. Fire magic moves up to S. He's doing like moonbee. I mean, he's doing much better than I thought. Fast growth type of stats. You know, he's got a couple decent ones. Everything else is average. We haven't tapped into grit in I don't know how long, but, you know, six wins out of nine starts and two grade ones. He's doing much better than I thought. And again, I think Pink Gem Gemstone's an awesome broodmare for us. But this guy, Golden Boy, I dropped that Azalea Cup. No, I dropped the other uh, 2000 G with him. We were supposed to win that. It, he would still be undefeated. That That's insane. Eight wins and nine starts, one grade one. Definitely dropped that. And um, Formal Opera, I've dropped quite a few races with him. and I feel like I just need to run him as a closer because it seems like the game is punishing me for not running him as a closer, which, whatever, bro. Yeah, Fire Magic is doing well. Butterfly Effect, I mean, we are in the zone with her. Hard to think I've even lost any races with her. Four grade ones already for this gal. Moonbee is doing better than I thought. He's got six grade ones. From King B and Pink Gemstone. This guy is doing fantastic. At least for what you know, I'm used to. Long Live Bolero's only got two wins. He still has a late growth type. He's not going to start showing his pedigree or any of his troop um, capabilities. At least until later next year. But it's good to see he's got three stats in the 70s. Stam's not the greatest. Speed and Stang should hit 70. So I think he'll be good enough to be competitive once he hits his peak. But... We'll still have to wait and see. Counterclockwise, not good. We have to pay attention to that. Got to be more mindful about tapping in the last corner leader with him as well. Stargazing. He's got five grade ones, 11 wins, and 16 starts. Uh, we've been doing really well with him. No complaints. I think he's already past his peak, though. Um, but still, I think he'll be solid enough for us. I just... Hate that so many of my horses have inherited counterclockwise, not good. Like, we're, they're just getting that from nobody. Not even their parents. Silver Bullet's got five grade ones on the dirt. 12 wins and 21 starts. Moon Trapper's only got 10 wins out of 25 starts. But again, it's been mainly grade threes and grade twos. Um, she's not getting grade one wins, as you can see. So 
She's earned over. She's earned 80k <laughs> or 80 G's. Um, in gold, she's got 36k. So, um, for what it's worth, I mean, Moon Trapper, you know, she's average, but she's very consistent. Technically, when you look at that, out of 25 starts, she's finished in the top three, 22 over 25 times. Okay, so she's a very consistent horse, a ranked horse, and she's she peaked at like what three? I'm still racing her and still finding ways to finish in the top three as you can see by our last three results a second a first and a third two years past her prime so i'm very curious what she could be for breeding no abilities of course but still we have desert diver and ant b in there i think we partner her again with a really strong sire she could be worth it and the general reason of course we're still trying to figure it out with him 12 wins only one grade one and 36 starts Obviously, a title would be nice, an award, something to get him. But, um, this is the time to get it, so got to figure it out. But yeah, I think that's going to do it, though, for this episode. Let's actually go look at the yearlings, or the, uh, the foals. Same, whatever. See what they're looking like. Because we haven't actually looked at them, <laughs> I think about it, since they've been born. Like, we watched them. I mean, we saw them when they were born, and then I haven't gone back since. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to live streaming this, finally. Just have to improvise a couple of things, but um, as long as it works, and I think it should. I did test it, kind of, a couple of weeks ago. I just had it unlisted. Nobody could see it. And um, it was fine, so I'm just going to have to... You know, cross my T's, dot my I's type of thing on my setup and everything else. But, yeah. So, uh, we have two horses. Just turned a year old. Flying Cowboy and Lee's Gold. Lee's Cowboy is the name of this guy. And he should be he should be a blast. Because Lee's Gold has proven she is an awesome broodmare for us. So, this guy was Flying Cowboy. Actually, let's look at his pedigree. Third generation on his father's side, obviously. He has Western Tiger and Swath Buster in there as well. Speed and Willful for both of the parents. So yeah, this guy should be an absolute blast to work with. Last corner leader stretch burst. We know he's going to have pretty decent abilities. Least Cowboy should be another Golden Boy type of dude for sure. Stronger? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. But I think he'll be what we want. Vivid Gemstone. Vivid Legend. Uh, and Pink Gemstones. Or Vivid Legends, I should say, first fold. That will hit the track will be uh, this guy. Two-star flex, three-star power and calm, four-star future. Pink gemstone, she's also proven so far to be a great brood mare. So, as we can see, he's third generation on his mother's side with Arctic crop and night breeze in there. He can have a wide range of abilities. We have speed, we have guts, and we have explosive. Um, yeah, I think this guy is going to be very strong as well, for sure. So those are those two but let's look at the six new horses and we will be naming these probably in the live stream of course let's look to see we have vivid legend and irish fleet this cult it should be something special irish fleet's also proven to give us good horses so combine that with vivid legend i mean this guy should be an absolute monster i'm hoping beautiful little guy another cult flying cowboy and lee's gold so this is going to be the brother to the other cult we were just looking at that's one years old so we got two from them, and I just talked about it, Speed and Willful. So that's good. That's good. We're, we're giving, we're still carrying through, you know, a lot of Western Tigers pedigree. I mean, he's been awesome for me, really, with all my horses. So it's great that we're getting that kind of spread out. We have a filly here, beautiful, from Vivid Legend and Chasing Hearts. I think this is probably all of our favorites, um... Or this would be our favorite collectively to look forward to on the track. Third generation on the mother's side, this girl. Of course, Chasing Hearts, our first original that we have had into the Hall of Fame that we created. And she was from Artsy Crop and Suave Buster. And uh, we could have Speed, Willful, and Guts here with this filly. So, ah, my, it's just so many good horses to look forward to, man. My goodness. Another Vivid Legend uh, horse here. From him and Pink Gemstone. And again, third generation on the mother's side. Um, yeah, I think we have a... I wonder if we have a... I think somebody said they wanted a name, but another filly. 
which is going to be fantastic. So we got two boys, two gals in this crop. Another Colt, Blues Breeze, and Fiery Dancer. We have Sedate Ruler in there, Ant B. So speed is definitely going to be in this horse. And Guts should be there as well. Close race okay. It would be nice to inherit that. So beautiful guy there. And then another Philly. So we have three boys and three girls this this uh, this particular crop. That is that's awesome. That's right down the middle. That's what I want. Even it out. Give me a couple girls. Of course, keep me with a couple boys, and I'm happy. And this is Flying Cowboy and Awesome Autumn. This should also be a strong horse. Third generation on the father's side. Speed and willful. Like, all of my horses are going to be fast. There's no question about that. So, my goodness. Awesome crop of horses. There's not a single bad one here to me in this group. Not a single bad one, I don't think. I don't know what their stats are yet, but I think based off of the parents... The pedigree as a whole and just working with the parents like we haven't nobody has really failed us i think like of my recent created horses in the last couple of years of breeding none, none, none of none of them to me have failed you know whether or not they've won gws's or titles or you know dozens of g1s that's not the point like they've all been very good horses in their own way so like that is awesome man See, Vivid Legend and Pink Gemstone, I did them twice. I didn't realize that. So this guy, Vivid Gemstone, he is the brother of Golden Art. So they are brother and sister. That's awesome. I love that. That's fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, so excited. Uh, like I said, we'll probably do names in the live stream. Um, but yeah, so excited for the new foals that are here. So excited for our yearlings that are hitting the track. Diamond Plan will probably be in here next year. And I'm going to make sure I put him in early. So whatever he does this year, it's probably best to leave it there. And then retire him early. Like January of next year, just to make sure he's in the barn. But yeah, we have a lot of good stuff going on. I think it's showing because we're, we're having better results. We're doing better as a whole in our season mode. Um... Yeah, so like I said, no complaints for me, man. But my goodness, we have a stacked live stream. A lot of races. Um, a lot of things to achieve. So we're going to have to be focused. So make sure when you guys come into the live stream, like we are focused on you know, trying to achieve as much success as we can with all of our horses. In whatever way that's possible. If it means we have to take it slow and just do opens, we'll do opens. But we need to be focused on it because we, we have too much going on now. I, I do not want to mess anything up, obviously. This is the most horses I've ever played with in this game. Like, my gosh. I'm surprised Tigress of Stone was not that good. Her stats did not look great at all. Now, you guys know the deal, y'all. I like for my horses now to prove prove their worth. So before I throw tack on them, we're going to see how they perform in their first race. Usually it's like, okay, if they win, they'll, they'll earn their tack. But I think if they show me that they're going to be a good horse, I'll, I'll put tack on them quickly. Toxic Blonde. She may deserve tack right now, honestly. Yeah, she may, um... Hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do her tack now. I'm just going to give her the two back since she's already got that right uh, front. Hmm. The black and the yellow. She needs yellow somewhere, right? wonder how I should do that. I like yellow on these horses sometimes, but then there's other times where I'm just like, ah, I want it to stick out a little bit more. Hmm. I just thought about something. Purple and yellow? Shadow roll. Purple? That one or this one? That looks a little bit bluish. I'm going to go ahead and... Should now I think about it, what would this color look? Huh. That's not bad, actually. And then I don't know if she needs a hood or not. Are we trying to scare these other horses? Actually, I do have an idea. Hmm... I have an idea, but that's not the look that I want.
you see yellow with with horses with this type of coat it's hit or miss to me sometimes i just feel like it just kind of it sticks out in like a weird way it doesn't really blend in as well as i want it to now if we did white and yellow how would uh, i didn't mean to do white and white sorry i think this girl's tack is important but i don't know if she needs a hood to be honest i really don't i think she's a type of horse that probably doesn't really need a hood you know as much as I, you know, obviously love horses with hoods, but, um, I honestly just like the shadow roll with the purple and the yellow back there. I don't think for now that, that, that works for Toxic Blonde. From Blue's Blee, uh, excuse me, Blue's Breeze and Lee's Gold. I mean, her father did have a hood. Hmm. Just, I'm trying to think of something I feel like I haven't done in a while, but that's proving to be a little bit more difficult. I would like to admit, gray and yellow. Hmm. This is the part where obviously a live stream helps out a lot because I have you guys to kind of bounce off of as far as like advice on like, oh yeah, we like that or no, we don't really like it. I do like the gray. I mean, I feel like it's different. That's the thing. We want to do some different stuff, right? Give her the blinkers. Can't forget that. Ear type. Not green. My goodness. That'd be too wild. Man, that's giving me like super hardcore unicorn vibes. And I don't know if that's the vibe I'm going for with her. Yeah, like the yellow and the purple with the stripes. That is not the vibe. If I did this with yellow... Sometimes I don't like the ears, honestly. Like, I'm a fan of it only on certain horses. Um. I don't know if the gray is throwing me off. Like, I don't know if that's... Hmm. Okay, so what if I did a different color? Like, the mesh just looks so weird sometimes, I swear. I'm just curious how it would look if I did other colors. Yeah, not a fan of it. No mesh. Hmm. So that type of purple and yellow. The gray shadow roll? No. White shadow roll? I feel like we do that on all of our horses. Yellow just looks weird. I mean, I did really like that purple. thought that was different. Hmm. No pink. I mean, her father. I forgot what Blue's Breeze uh, colors were, but you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and um stick with the gray and the yellow. Honestly. Yeah, we'll go ahead and stick with that. I may change it at some point, but I think that that works. Uh, the things I do in this game, just for my horses, man. I take all that time just to do tack. Tigris of Stone. I just like why. Why is the game get seemingly giving you bad stats? And I don't think she's going to have a long growth type. Unless she inherited that maybe from somebody else. But I doubt it. Like, I mean, she is third generation on both sides, which is good. So she's got Arctic Crop, Night Breeze, Swab Buster, Western Tiger in her. Along with Flying Cowboy and, of course, Gemstone, her parents. So she could have any of the great abilities. She could have speed. She could... I mean... She can inherit a lot, really. So I'm just surprised that like her stats were so low. Like so low. Like just is she gonna have a late growth type? Cause like in the barn, she was four stats across the board. And I think one five stats, so it's just like it's weird to me, but it is what it is. No big deal. We'll have to wait and see. Appreciate you guys for the love and support on the channel. Like I said, next time we get back into this game, we will be live streaming, so uh, get ready for that. And, um, yeah, appreciate you guys for love and support as always. Until next time, we're going to sign out. You know, again, eh, just have a great and fantastic day. We shall see you later, and goodbye. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.